against Iowa-Purdue as we start the stretch run of the Big Ten. The Hawkeyes come in 8-1 and tied for first in the conference. The Hawks are thinking Rose Bowl and beyond that a possible national championship. Quarterback Chuck Long also remains a strong candidate for the Heisman Trophy. And Long's opponent today is Jim Evers, another in a long line of outstanding Purdue quarterbacks. It should be some air show. We're live in West Lafayette, Indiana. Sports presents college football. Live from Ross H. Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's the Iowa Hawkeyes versus the Purdue Boilermakers. Today's game is sponsored by your Toyota dealer, the 1986 Celica. Totally redesigned for performance and style. Who could ask for anything more? AC Delco, the smart parts. And by Strohs and Stroh Light. Now you're talking good times and Strohs is spoken here. And the Big Ten picture right now as we get ready for Purdue and Iowa is this. The Buckeyes and the Hawkeyes tied for the top. Just moments ago, Ohio State took a 7-6 lead on Wisconsin. Quarterback Jimmy Casados goes 37 yards to wide receiver Chris Carter. The big picture, both the Buckeyes and the Hawkeyes still in the battle for a national championship. And, of course, you would expect that our national title holder will emerge from the top ten as you look at the next five there. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brett Musburger. It's football weather here in the Midwest. A little chill in the air and a little wind, just what you'd expect on a November Saturday here. And this is so big for Iowa. Not only is the Rose Bowl at stake if Ohio State should lose today or next week, but bowl scouts from the Orange Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl all are here taking a look at those Hawkeyes. How good are they? They are about to find out. Now let's go down and let's take a look at the Hawkeyes as they come out. Their coach, Hayden Fry, who last week Brought them to that shutout victory of Illinois and his field general Chuck Long still very much in the running for the Heisman Trophy. And across the way, here come the Boilermakers. <laughs> now head coach Leon Burton. So we're about set to go, and uh, Eric Parsegan, my colleague, has come in here many times as a favorite. You know how tough Purdue is in this situation. And a number of times out there, and he walked away with it without the wind being upset, and I just hated him. And I know that Iowa comes in here with a similar situation in the sense that they have a whole lot to lose and not a whole lot to gain by winning the football game. And the reason being very simply is that Hayden Fry knows he's got to face Jim Everett, the outstanding passer, the leading passer in the nation, along with a leading, leading receiver in Carter. But the big problem for, I think, Hayden is the fact that this football team lost badly last week to Michigan, and generally teams with pride will rebound and play well the following week. But I think the key in this ball game is very simply to watch the Purdue defense. They have to have a great effort if they expect to upset this great Hawkeye team. All right, Arrow, we're about set to go, and we'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. about ready to start here in West Lafayette, Indiana. The coin flip has been won by the Boilermakers, and they will be moving from right to left on your screen. Now, also with there at me today, Pat O'Brien will be working the sidelines and taking a look at the stories of note. And let's go down to Pat right now. All right, Brent, thank you. One of the big stories this past couple of weeks has been Jim Everett's right throwing arm. Earlier today, we were in the locker room as they prepared him for today's contest. Now, what happened on October 5th, he suffered a laceration in his right elbow. It looked almost like a bullet hole in there. But over the, that was on October 5th. But over the past couple of weeks, he's been suffering from infection in that arm, and it has been bothering him. Although today, he says he feels 100%, over 90 for sure. And he told me this morning after they put a pad on that arm to prevent it from being hit, he said, Pat, I'm ready to go. So Brent, we'll see. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Pat, thank you. In our weather conditions here this afternoon, and it could have been a lot worse, folks. It rained hard yesterday, cleared off. But, Era, what about that wind at 23 miles an hour? It could really have an effect on both passers. It's coming out of the west-southwest, and, of course, it swirls down on the floor of the field there. So it'll be interesting to see how both long and, of course, ever do in their first passing attempt. Now there's Jonathan Briggs. 
Number 20 of Purdue with the ball teed up. They won the toss and elected to defer. So the Hawkeyes said, we'll take the ball right off the top. Iowa coming off that tremendous victory at home over Illinois. And of course, Purdue was shellacked by Michigan. So the Boilermakers with something to prove here this afternoon. Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes hoping to impress the scouts. As a matter of fact, you could call this a scout bowl. Not only do we have all the bowl scouts represented here today, but there are all sorts of scouts from the National Football League, and they are paying very careful attention to the two quarterbacks whom you are about to see. Briggs kicks it off. It'll go on into the end zone. Kevin Harmon downs it there, and he'll come on out to the 20 yard line. So you're going to be seeing the Heisman Trophy candidate, the senior Chuck Long from Wheaton, Illinois. Behind him, he'll have the fullback out of Waxahachie, Texas. Ronnie Harmon, Bayside High School, Queens, New York. Scott Helverson's from Des Moines, Iowa. Apple out of Cedar Rapids, who's fine control receivers. Mike Flagg from Cedar Falls, Iowa. A lot of homegrown talent and sprinkle in a few New Yorkers and one very good quarterback from Wheaton, Illinois. So it'll be first and ten, and Errol, what can we expect from that Purdue defense? Well, this has been one of the problems that they've had has been their defense, particularly in the secondary, but they've gone to a three-man front with four linebackers rather than the conventional four. They ran Harmon right at those linebackers. What sort of reaction did you pick up from them? Kevin Sumlin in on the stop. As you see, Sioux City, Iowa, Dave Croston, Tom Humphrey from Amityville, New York, as they break that huddle and come to the line of scrimmage quickly, you see the rest of their line, and there's the handoff. And Harmon is swarmed at the 25-yard line. Aaron, I'm sorry I had to interrupt you. They're coming right now without a huddle up to the line of scrimmage, so the first series was obviously called by the coaches before they even started. Well, they're using the hustle huddle to keep Purdue from changing defenses. To do it, here they go again. Long back to throw. He drops it off to Harmon. Harmon with daylight, first down. And he gets out to about the 46 yard line before Kennedy Wilson, who is playing strong safety, finally runs him out. One thing that Iowa does exceptionally well, and certainly with that fellow right there, Harmon, is screen. And here they are with Long dumping it off. But what they're trying to do is to keep Purdue from changing defenses. They apparently anticipated a, a change in the strategy of Purdue, and certainly that's exactly what they intended to do, but they haven't been able to do so in that first series because of the hustle huddle. That was Kratz leading that play around the right side when they set up and dropped it off. Now they hand to Harmon, who gets to the tackle and drives into Purdue territory down to the 45. Chris Dishman, 19 and 23. Wilson in on the stop. You know, Brent, the idea here, of course, for Purdue is the anticipation of trying to stop the passing game of Iowa. And here Iowa comes out and starts to run the football. They have changed the defenses from that four-man front to the three-man lineman, two outside linebackers, and they haven't played it since the Pittsburgh game. So they're having a little trouble adjusting here in this early going. Second down and a yard, and Iowa with a squat left, and they run Hudson for another first down. And he busts inside the Purdue 40-yard line. Matt Morgan, 59, bringing him down. You take a look now at the Purdue defense era has been talking about. Bobby Zilt out of Homewood, Illinois. There's a boy from Louisiana. Brad Horner in that line. Washington, Pennsylvania is the hometown for Kevin Holly. St. Charles, Missouri is where Don Baldwin grew up. And Tony Visco at the suburb of Toronto. <laughs> We've got a lot of Canadians on this football yeah, team. Sure we the coordinator, Teller. Joe Teller is a coach up there in the pro league. So long making the call at the line of scrimmage, and Harmon is picked up behind him, and they certainly did not fool Baldwin. Yeah. Now the rest of that Purdue defense here this afternoon. Matt Morgan out of Chicago moves in and starts at one linebacker. They're without their best linebacker out with an injury. Rod Woodson from Fort Wayne, Indiana is a splendid athlete. Chris Dishman out of Louisville. Kennedy Wilson, another Chicago one down there. And Mark Foster from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Any number of Chicago athletes have come to Purdue through the years. And of course, they also get a lot of talent out of the Indianapolis area. 
Here it is now, second and 13 after that loss. The fullback, Hudson, and he is hit right there by Kevin Roy. But um, Purdue was deployed in the three-man front that time, anticipating pass. Iowa decided to go ahead and run the football, but there was apparently the right tackle was out of position, and the linebacker moved him up, moved him over just in time, and put him right into the hole. Here, here is third and 11 for Fly in Iowa. I would imagine that they would come up with one of those control passes to Helbers and Unhappel. They have liked the sideline. That's been very effective for him. He needs just over 10 yards for the first down. Straight back, great pass protection. Waits and goes to Clint early, and it's broken up in the middle. Splendid play by Jeff Lee, number 18. Boy, nice job there by Jeff Lee. Didn't know he's going to play a whole lot today, but he stuck right on him. You can see Long here is normally a long time to, to set up and find the receiver, but you watch Jeff Lee come in just as the ball's thrown. There's Long slowly dives in there and knocks the ball down away from Kennerly. Here is their very tight formation of the punt, and he just does get it off after bobbling the snap. Griffin comes over. He'll let the ball bounce, and so the Hawkeyes have trouble again with their punting team. Jim Evers coming out now. He'll have a first down after that 13-yard punt. He'll be right back. Chuck Long on the headset, conferring with the Iowa assistants upstairs. Era, that win certainly held the punt up by Custer Ball. Boy, it really did. You could just see the wind just stop that ball. So Everett will have the wind in this drive. This is a first down for Jim Everett and our first look at him here this afternoon. Rolls to the right. Complete. And a splendid catch by Mark Jackson, the flanker. Well, who said they're going to try to run the football and they come right up with a misdirection pass right off the top you see Everett rolling out he's got plenty of time to good blocking in front you'll see Jackson come into the screen and he makes a great catch right there I think Everett's arm's okay Jay Norville tackle him after Jackson picked up a first down an 11 yard gain and all that concern about Everett's arm and of course Leon Burnett wonders how hard he can throw the ball throughout the entire game He'll throw it again. He's got it for his tight end. There's another first down. Marty Scott stepped out of bounds, and he was Everett's target on that play. Here are his running backs from Indianapolis, Ray Wallace. Rodney Carter is more of a pass receiver coming out of the backfield. Jackson from Terre Haute, Indiana. Steve Griffin, he's out of the floor there. Only a wide receiver out of the floor. And Marty Scott just made that first down. The ball is up now to the 48 yard line. First down, and Everett goes to the shotgun, coach. Well, they've done it this year. He was trying to run off of it. It is Carter. Tackle at midfield by John Breeze, number 57. Write him down. Here's the rest of the offense. Marcus Brent out of Kalamazoo. One of their better offensive linemen. Vince Panfield from Orland Park, Illinois. And Rick Skipinski. Rick Skipinski from Lafayette, Indiana. Todd Tyree from the same hometown. And another Chicagoan, Mike Turner. At that other tackle spot. Second down and eight. Now again, they give that Iowa defense a different look. They send Wallace in motion. Carter drags over the middle. Hey, he's got it. Steps to the 49-yard line. George Davis, the linebacker, pounded him all the way. Davis did an excellent job. He stayed right with him. It's one of the favorite passes that Purdue throws. And, of course, as you know, Carter is a dangerous receiver once he catches the ball. And he had Davis right there at a sensational game last week. Outstanding. And, of course, the coaches upstairs want to see how Davis is going to react when they keep Carter right there. And then perhaps they can drop the tight end in behind that linebacker and see if they can get somebody working a little bit deeper. It is third and six. Shotgun again for Everett and the Boilermaker. They fake the blitz and drop back out. Protection, middleman, Griffin, he's free, 25, he should score, touchdown Purdue! Boilermaker 
Lakers again. <laughs> They're certainly off the heck of a start. Beautifully executed play. The senior wide receiver. 48 yard touchdown pass. Everett to Steve Griffin. Jonathan Briggs, number 20, to attempt the extra point. Griffin, Steve Griffin, right there, number two, right between the two linebackers, Station and Davis, and of course Griffin turns up the field, the leading pass receiver last year, and of course has been sort of, uh, he just didn't have many pass receptions this year because of the two great backs. Era, Rick Schmidt slipped on that play, now Devon Mitchell is injured, and Schmidt is back there at safety. We're back live, and the Hawkeyes have just given up their first touchdown this season in the first quarter. Briggs will kick it off for the Boilermakers. Harmon and Early are standing back at the goal line for return, and the up back is Grant Goodwin. Early is three yards deep, touchback. And Errol, let's take a look at that touchdown play again, the 48 yard of what happened. There's Steve Griffin right here, comes down and hooks. You'll see Schmidt, number 11, come from your screen right there, and Devon Mitchell, but Schmidt is the guy right here that falls and is not able to make the tackle on Griffin. Let's take a look at him. You see Griffin, Steve Griffin, coming right down, hooks right in the scene between the two linebackers, Station and Davis. There's Schmidt, slips and falls, and Griffin has daylight all the way to the goal line as Scott, number 84, tries to pick off one of the Iowa Hawkeyes chasers. Chuck Long and Iowa on first down. They switch formations up at the line. It's the eye. Stand up tight end as usual. Here comes Harmon on the power sweep. First Dishman, 19, in for the tackle. Now, the top 10 looks this way, and of course, Notre Dame and Penn State will kick it off at about 3.30 this afternoon. We'll be keeping an eye on that one. And of course, Nebraska and Kansas are tied in the first period at a field goal apiece. Ohio State has come back, and next week, the Buckeyes have the big one. They go into Ann Arbor to take on the Michigan Wolverines, and the Wolverines are suddenly on an offensive tear. This is second and seven for the Hawkeyes. Long is back. As time, he's dangerous on the move. Comes back to the left side. Waits for Quinn early and throws it to him right there at the 33. He caught the ball. First down, and you can see how dangerous Long is off the scramble. And also, Brent, that's the problem when you only rush three men. Three men cannot get the Long. The protection is excellent. Watch here. You see Baldwin, number 99, trying to rush. Or 98, rather, right there. Horner and Holly, 71, Zilt. And you see the three of them cannot get the Long. Long is running all over the field and finally finds early for a first down. with Robert Smith not here, Quinn Early becomes their outside receiver with speed. Off a of play fake, quick drop over the middle to Harmon. He drops the ball near midfield. It'll be second and 10. The Air Force strikes early, and Pat Hayden, what else is happening in that BYU game? Brand, after a shaky start where Robbie Bosco threw two interceptions in the first quarter, he's bringing the Cougars back. Here he finds Mark Bellini for 22 yards in the score. That makes it 14 to seven in the second quarter. Let's go back to Brent Nero. All right, Pat, keep those highlights coming, coach. There's a lot of interest in that one. Second and 10. Long put Harmon up on a wing. Drops back. Throws toward Billy Happel on the sideline, but out of bounds. It'll be third and 10, Dishman and Foster. There's a good example of the wind affecting that ball. He was throwing right in to the west, the west wind, which had an effect. And of course, Leon's getting everybody getting pumped up. Got a good start in this ball game, but the wind is a factor. Remember, Long will get the wind in the second quarter. So many teams throughout the year have come into Ross A. Stadium thinking that it would be a cakewalk, only to walk out. Another victim. 
Third and ten. Long is back. Good protection. Gets it off. Harmon with a great catch. And wrestles down at the 35. Mark Foster, but what a remarkable catch by Ronnie Harmon. Well, he really made up for the one he dropped, didn't he, Brent? What a great catch that was. And, of course, when he gets his hands on the ball in the secondary in the open field, look out, he's gone. You see Long trying to, well, rather the three-man rush, trying to get the Long. This time they do a much better job, but they ball us away by Long. A great catch there by Ronnie. And, I mean, he can run with a football. Is he dangerous in the open? Woo. So the senior running back. Out of Bayside, Queens, New York. One hands it. Comes down with the ball. And so those pro scouts who came to see the quarterback have to be drooling just a bit over what number 31 showed him that time. 33-yard gain for Long and the Hawkeyes. Chuck rolls to the right. Under pressure. Steps away from it. Off the pump fake, but now he will not get away. And he is down. John Baldwin took him down, number 98. He was the first one in on him that time. And they pour in at the 40-yard line. It is going to be a five-yard loss on the side. And Purdue had deployed with a four-man rush that time and put more pressure on Wong. Wong decided not to throw the ball. He had an open receiver. You know, he wanted to make sure he didn't throw an interception. He's got a drive going, so I think he used good judgment that time. Comes up with a second and 15. Split back, formation. Pressure drops it off to Harmon. On a little flip screen, and Harmon gets to the 35-yard line. It'll be about third and 10. Rod Woodson, number 26. And keep in mind that young man who you're looking at right there. He's going to be an all-American cornerback before he's finished here at Purdue. They say he's one of the best in the conference right now in the defensive backfield. Of course, that secondary of Purdue has been troubled throughout the year, but certainly not Woodson. You see, the deep secondary that time, Brett, they were way back. They've been burned during the course of the year. But boy, were they zoning deep. Kevin Harmon checks into that backfield. He replaces his brother for the Hawkeyes. Long will throw on third and ten. Now he's under pressure, trying to get away from it. He does at midfield on the run. Down he goes, and another sack. Kevin Sumlin and Bob Zilch combined to do the job. You know, one of the things that's really impressing me, here you see Chuck Long, and he's looking down the field. He doesn't believe that Purdue is so deep with their zones. The deep people were back 19 yards that time on the alignment. He slips a tackle right here, almost gets away from the second right there. That was corner, and he sacked the big yardage, and there's the punt. Oscar Bula's punt, and Griffin makes the fair catch near the 20-yard line. It is Purdue ahead of Iowa. After that 29-yard punt, we'll come back. Boilermakers ball. So here, Purdue leads by seven, and tomorrow on CBS, the big one is Dallas and Chicago. Our coverage starts at 12.30 Eastern time. The great Gail Sayers, the Hall of Famer of the Chicago Bears, will be live in New York. He'll compare Tony Dorsett and Walter Payton. We'll get up close with big Mike Ditka, and we'll find out from Irv Cross whether or not Jim McMahon's arm injury is serious. And Jimmy the Greek will handicap the Cowboys and the Bears. 12.30 Eastern time, the big one on CBS. Here it is, first and 10 for the Boilermakers. Everett is 4 of 4, 72 yards and a touchdown. They run the draw play with Wallace that time, the fullback. Errol, what did the coaches tell you about the running attack here for Purdue against Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes? Well, they felt that they had to run the football. They were one-dimensional with the passing game, and I expected them in that opening drive to run the football. At least this is what Bob Spoo said, but certainly the way Everett's thrown the ball, they might as well stay with what they've had with the great success, his throwing ability. Although this will keep a, that little draw play they ran there was probably quiet the rush down of Iowa. Devon Mitchell is still in. So is Hap Peterson at nose guard. Both of those players were shaken up last week. Everett drops inside the tent. Has protection. Drops it over the middle and a fine catch by Carter. He shows you why he is the nation's leading receiver this year. And remember, he's coming out of the backfield. Six foot, 206 pounds. Meanwhile, Tennessee, hoping for a sugar bowl. 
beat Mississippi. And Oklahoma is ahead of Colorado. That one just underway in the first quarter. And how about that Michigan wow. offense? That really is something. That's really a surprise. They must be coming on. These last two games, they've played outstanding football offensively. It is third and six. Everett goes to the shotgun. Straight back over the middle to Carter, and he hammers right there. Station hit him along with Pryor, number 99, and Rodney Carter had to feel that one as the great Larry Station delivered a blow. That's their favorite pass route. The linebackers, the outside linebacker, as Michigan did a week ago, which was prior that time, and Station to shut the pass off that Purdue has had great success with. Throw the Boilermaker. Set to punt it, standing at about the 12. Low punt. Could be set up for a return. Here comes Happel. Coverage gets down and drives him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Kevin Roy helping out. We'll be right back. Iowa trailing by seven. Well, to get a closer look at the surface we're playing on here, let's go down to Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Brent, thank you. Usually PAT means point after touchdown. Here it means prescription athletic turf. That's the playing field here, the system designed here at Purdue by the Agriculture Department. What it is is sod on the top, about 15 inches of sand underneath that, and then some pumps that pull the water down and off the playing field. There is The surface is completely flat. It is not uh, rounded at all anywhere, and I got to tell you, it works, Brent. As you know, it's been raining here the last six days, and the field is dry. That's sure PAT. Is. Let's go back to BRENT. All right, Pat. First and ten, and on the running play, Armin Jitterbugging gets to about the 34-yard line. Era, how much is the wind affecting this Hawkeye offense here in the opening quarter? I think they'll do much better when they, at the end of the quarter, when Long is able to throw downwind. Uh, at least the wind is coming from the southwest, and they're going into it, quartering into it. It'll help it. Second and six coming up for the Hawkeyes. Harmon and Hudson are the running backs behind Chuck Long. There's the inside handoff, and Hudson breaks free. He's at midfield. Inside the 45, down to the 42-yard line, Mark Foster, 31, finally rides him down, but it was a 23-yard gain for the Hawkeyes. Watch Tom Humphrey, the left guard, pull, take the trap. I like this Hudson guy. I tell you, he's a good football player. Number 20, I like him. Every game that we have seen, the Hawkeyes have played. This guy's a real load. He gets yard. He's never knocked backwards. And for 220-some-odd pounds, he weaves around there pretty good. First down for Long is Hudson. There's a split back along with Harmon. Both release his pass receivers. They hit Harmon inside the 40. Kevin Sumlin, number 44. Over on the coverage for Purdue. Sumlin now taking the defensive call from the sideline. Now the Boilermakers are without their best linebacker, Fred Strickland. He is out because of an injured knee. Not even in uniform here this afternoon. Number one tackler on this football team with 113 involvement. So uh, they've had a lot of injuries that have been very hurtful to them. Second and five, and that time, in the middle of that Boilermaker defense led by 92, Brad Horner. Boy, he really came around there, didn't he? Number two. Well, Thanksgiving Day, traditionally football and CBS and at 3.30 Eastern time we'll start our coverage of the St. Louis Cardinals and the Dallas Cowboys then the next day Virginia will go against Maryland 2.30 Eastern time and on Saturday at 3.30 it'll be Notre Dame against Miami and then on Sunday we'll have a doubleheader on CBS we'll start at 12.30 Eastern time so keep in mind the Thanksgiving Day holiday football feast on CBS here it is long over the middle complete Hubbardson at the 22-yard line, Kennedy Wilson, 23, bringing him down there. It'll be a first and 10 for the Hawkeyes inside of a minute to go in the first quarter. Well, it's a great release here by Long. He sees his open receiver, Helverson. Watch him get rid of this ball. Boom. And that ball is right there, right drilled to Helverson. Number 87. 
I think that's about his 45th reception this year. Chuck Long, six of nine, 90 yards here in the first quarter, but trailing by seven. He'll throw his 10th pass. Tapper, he's down at the two-yard line. He took a great hit by Wilson. Went back to exactly the same area with a different receiver. Number 40, Happel, just replaced Helberson on that pass play. Here it is from the ground level. There's 92 trying to rush. That, of course, is Horner. He reaches up with his hands but does not get to the ball. There comes Happel, number 40, and the ball's right there. Good contact, but he hangs right on. It'll be that power eye. Fred Bush, 35, will join Hudson. And here comes up over the top, Ronnie Harmon. And he was in for the touchdown. The official waits on the call. Now he comes in, and Harmon has indeed gone over the top, broke the plane, according to the officials. I think it was on the second effort that time, Brent. I think the first time, he didn't quite make it. He rolled off the pile, and then you see him cross the line for the touchdown. I believe it was the second effort that Ronnie gave there. Great, great running back. Rob Houtland set to kick this extra point. Leon Burtnett and Purdue would fall into a 7-7 tie if successful. And that's where we are. With less than 10 seconds to go in the first quarter, Iowa scores its first touchdown and watch that second effort by Harmon right here. He goes up over the top and then indeed he slipped back in. See, there was that second effort that time that brought him in. He tries to dive over, but the defense does a great job. They're all piled up. He rolls off of that pile and watch him cross the line. Right there, the ball does get past the line. That's something that Ohio State did not let him do in a critical fourth and one in Columbus, which was their only law. Exactly. How you doing today? I just said I'm enjoying my Boilermakers here this afternoon. Tied at seven, eight seconds to go. That was a seven-play, 70-yard drive by Iowa. Of course, our Toyota Leadership Award goes weekly to a team member who's been singled out by the athletic department and the faculty advisor for his team contributions, grades, and citizenship. And today's winners are Mike Flagg of Iowa and Jim Everett of Purdue. And Toyota will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. So congratulations to Mike and Jim. We're at a leadership award winners on this Saturday. Cook will kick it off for the Hawkeyes. It took them a little while to get going against the wind in there. You would have to think that Air Long just might do that in the second quarter. Well, you, can, you know, the scouting and the coaching, obviously, from the press box down the sideline for the Hawkeyes was excellent because the secondary of Purdue is playing at normally deep. They normally play back there about 8, 10 yards. They are playing 16 and 17 yards back, and of course they're so far back they cannot recover to the curl hook that Happel and Halverson put on them in that particular drive. Linebackers can't get that deep, and the secondary was too deep. They're going to have to bring them up. Every team, the ball up, set to go. Woodson and Wallace are the two deep men for the Boilermakers. Sugar Bowl, 
And Iowa is a very attractive bowl team right now. And of course, Ohio State loses, and the Hawkeyes win here today and next week against Minnesota. Then Iowa would go to the Rose Bowl. Here is Wallace at the 16. Wallace comes across the 30, out to the 35 yard line. And a little pushing and shoving breaking out down here as referee Tom Quinn's staff steps in. And Riley on that special team came down. His father was a linebacker with the Chicago Bears. Mike Riley. So what's happening with BYU and Air Force, Pat? All right, Brent. Robbie Bosco has thrown his third interception of the day. Now, two of them have been returned for touchdowns. He's been thrown behind his receivers all day. This one by Juan Wilson. 60 yards later, he gets in the end zone, 21 to 7. Air Force on top. Let's go back to Brent Mira. And the Air Force Academy also an attractive bowl team. As they continue unbeaten if they can win today. A fake draw, pass over the middle to Griffin. Ball is recovered by Iowa on the fumble. Fumbled at the 45-yard line and recovered by Rick Schmidt, number 11. And that certainly makes up for when he slipped. And Griffin took in that touchdown pass to the Boilermaker. Great break right here to Wallace on the draw play. And of course, there's the delivery right there by Everett. But unfortunately, fumbles the ball for the Boilermakers. And Schmidt jumps on it. And the Hawkeyes have it. Come to the end of the first quarter. We're tied at seven. We'll return after this break in a word from your local station. Well, Eric Schmidt recovered the fumble, but George Davis, the linebacker, he tore into Griffin. And, of course, he's coming off that good game a week ago against Illinois. And he's continuing here this afternoon in West Lafayette, Indiana. We're tied at seven. Chuck Long on the first down of the second quarter. Hit Harmon. Harmon took the tackle inside the 40. He's down to the 35-yard line. Kennedy Wilson, 23, finally tripped him up. But it's a 13-yard game and a first down for the Hawkeyes. Errol, what numbers stand out to you? Well, I think that looking at this, uh, the possession of 10.39 to 4.21, you can't allow Iowa to do that. That's exactly what they did to the University of Michigan. They had the ball almost 40 minutes in the game to about 20, and boy, that's a big advantage for them. The eye look, big to Harmon. Comes back to Happel, steps out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Dishman was the cornerback with the coverage that time. Another 17 yards tacked on for Chuck Long. Boy, they're keeping the ball away from one Jim Everett. <laughs> that turnover really hurt him. There's for the leadership in the Ivy League, era. Yeah? Well, Penn was undefeated going into that ball game. Ivy, Ivy League play. Well, no, Carmen Coase is not doing too well at Yale. Long 9 of 12 for 140 already. Ronnie Harmon was stacked up and again stepped outside. And he gets to the one-yard line before Dishman can finally bring him down. It is a second effort again on the part of Harmon. Well, he's a tremendous runner. I think two years ago, he's only been a running back here at Iowa for two years. Here it is again. Should be stopped here. What's right here? Should be stopped. He didn't come off of that pile. Finds the daylight. Keeps right on going all the way to about the one-yard line. Boy, he's a good runner. Not a bad pass receiver, either. Exactly. <laughs> that same power eye alignment. They scored their last touchdown with Harmon. This time, it's Hudson for the score. Up over the top. They go to the first back, who sometimes leads Harmon into the end zone. With that time, they just... Tuck it into the grasp of number 20, and Hayden Fry has another touchdown. I think he likes what's happening right now. Boy, I like that Hudson. I tell you, he's played exceptionally well. He's just a sophomore. You're going to see more of him with the Iowa team. So with the win, they go 48 yards in four plays in 50 seconds. And Houtman set to attempt the extra point that would put Iowa up 14-7. And the former star from New Trier High School outside of Chicago is accurate with that one. Well, this is the key play right here in the drive where 
Long hands the ball off to Harmon. It looks like it's all clocked up off tackle there. You see three boiler makers, but look at Harmon come off of that pile, give him a little movement that movement in there, and just stretches himself all the way to the one yard line. And here's the touchdown with Ron Hudson, Ron Hudson, David Hudson. Comes right over the top. Watch him dive up over the pile right here. Launches himself. Boy, he's airborne. Touchdown. And the Hawkeyes are saying we're still in the hunt for that national championship. Here we come. Iowa leading for the first time this afternoon. And Marv Cook will kick it off. Wallace and Woodson set the return for the Boilermakers. And then it'll be up to Jim Everett, who has been perfect here so far this afternoon. He is 7 of 7 for 92 yards. His last completion wound up being a fumble. Griffin, who had scored, produced touchdown, couldn't hold on, and then as a result of that turnover, Iowa moved on in for the lead touchdown. 14-10 to go here in the first half. Iowa with a seven-point lead. And again, the ball comes off the tee, so they'll readjust it. Well, that wind's coming from the west right on that angle. And uh, I think the passing opportunities are much better with the in favor, of course, for the Hawkeyes when they have the ball. Oh, we've Ooh. got the tabs on that one. Boy, they have really given Ohio State cover. I'm sure that Pat Hayden and the staff of New York will have an update, too, to show us exactly how that occurred. And it's picked up by Woodson at the 5, 10, 15, 20, and he is met right there. Drop down, where did he first contest? Well, let's find out exactly how the Badgers took the lead. Pat Hayden, what happened in Columbus? Well, I'll tell you what happened here, Brent. Marvin Artley from one yard out scored for the Badgers. Now, they went from two, but were unsuccessful. It's 12 to 7. And remember, Brent, Wisconsin's the last team to beat Ohio State in the shoe. Let's go back to Brent Nero. They have won 20 in a row, I believe, Arrow, in Columbus, Ohio. Two weeks ago, we saw them beat the Hawkeyes. So with a one eye on Michigan, perhaps, the Buckeyes are having trouble with the Badgers this afternoon. And it is first and 10. Ball is at the 21, and Jim Everett ready to go to work. And he hands off to Wallace, and he slips a tackle, and finally Station brings him down at the 18-yard line. When you're a passing team, you're a passing team. And when you try to run in your 10th game, you're going to have trouble. The play is brought in by a wide receiver here at Purdue. They use their outside men as the messengers. Number 80, John Hayes, has delivered it to Everett. So Jim Everett, one of a handful of impressive quarterbacks in the Big Ten this year. He figures to be a first-round draft choice, as does Chuck Long. And Everett pulls out the throw for the eighth time today. Under pressure, he eludes Cross. Now he's on the move. Throws it downfield. Wallace is open. Oh. He drops the ball near midfield. He simply dropped the ball. That's really unusual for Wallace. He's had 41 catches this year for 488 yards. Watch here as Everett scrambles out. He's forced out of the pocket. I think it's Jeff Gross right there, number 76. He avoids him. Now he comes out. He keeps flagging him down a little deeper, a little deeper, and Wallace just ball goes right through his hand, right there. And uh, the young man from Albuquerque, New Mexico, he needs a little help out there. He's had one pass fumbled, and now another one dropped. They cannot make mistakes like this against the team as talented as Iowa. Third down, and about 12 yards to go from the shotgun. Dan Everett. The blitz, a blitz is on. Davis runs him out. Everett keeps the ball, tries to turn upfield. The ball stays in Purdue's possession because he was the last to handle it. Station was over there on the sideline giving pursuit to Everett, and it'll be a punt for Purdue. Then on that blitz, no one picked up the butcher that time. Everett had no chance. He was flushed out of the pocket immediately and didn't have an opportunity. The line blocking did not pick it up. Well, Strummeyer is set to punt, and Ronnie Harmon is one of the deep backs for the Hawkeyes. Which means that Hayden Fry is serious about this return. He wants a little field position here with 13-11 to go in the first half. Iowa is up by seven. Purdue scored first. See how the wind affects this. 
It is held up. A fair catch signal by Heffel. It'll be at the 44-yard line. A 31-yard punt. So we'll come right back. It'll be Chuck Long's turn. Well, last year at this time, every time I encountered Jim Brock, he was standing next to Doug Flutie. Pat O'Brien, what's the horseman for the Cotton Bowl doing here today? Brent, there are a lot of bowl representatives here, about a half a dozen. In fact, Jim Brock is here, and Jim, how's it shaping up for the Cotton Bowl? Well, Pat, uh, Max Chris and I here today looking at Iowa, and of course, we have the other two big key uh, Big Ten games. The other bowl guys are here, and we're around the country at the other big game. This is a key Saturday. Uh, I think we're going to have a practice matchup on New Year's Day. You're talking, you're talking to uh, Paterno, Nittany Lyon. How's that working? Well, our Cotton Bowl people, particularly Phil Skull, has been in constant uh, contact with Coach Paterno, and I think that there's a good opportunity that Joe's going to end up in a major New Year's Day game, and I uh, hope they might be in Dallas, but no one knows, particularly Wednesday, because that's a big game with uh, uh, Notre Dame. But Joe's going to have his pick of the bowls on there. Uh, Jim Brown, thank you. Thank you, Pat. Chuck Long in trouble, throws it incomplete to the far sideline. Ronnie Harmon, who has already era, accounted for 115 yards, was the intended receiver. Era, what makes this Iowa team so attractive to Jim Brock and the rest of the scouts from the bowl? Well, I think they're such a well-balanced team. They can run the ball with a great runner like Harmon. They have great receivers, and of course, Chuck Long speaks for himself. And they've always been a solid defensive team. They've led the Big Ten three of the last four years. And folks, they travel with a whole lot of people from the state of Iowa. <laughs> the draw play hit Harmon trying to get outside but Tony Bisco number 49 made right there with Harmon and you know to follow up on that point era if you're a merchant in Dallas or New Orleans or Miami let's face it it's nice to have those folks come on down there and spend a little cash right well, you know we've seen the Hawkeyes on the road twice now over at Columbus Ohio against the Buckeyes and here they really support their team I mean a lot of Hawkeye fans follow this team all over the country some of them are loyal fans of the country. And right now they're watching a third and seven as Long calls an audible with the line of scrimmage. Straight back, back release. It's the Hudson over the middle. The linebackers have dropped off into their zone. And finally, Bisco again comes in to make the tackle, but it's a 12-yard gain and another first down. Long read that defense well that time. He really did. You know, Purdue has been burned so much by man-to-man. -man. They decided to go into the zone in this game, and there's that just a little underneath the Hudson. And, of course, all the linemen are the linebackers in the secondary trying to recover to it. It'll be interesting to see how soon Purdue abandons their intention for this zone and go to man-to-man -man and try to push him. So here at Purdue, I'm Brent Musburger along with Eric Parsi. And it's 14-7. Purdue scored first. Iowa has come back with two touchdowns. And Chuck Long again directing offensive traffic. Wants Quinn early over in the slot on the right. He'll throw it again on first down. Goes to the left, and it's intercepted by Woodson. Woodson at the 30, the 35, the 40. And Woodson comes to midfield before he is brought down by Mike Hake. That was a bad read by Chuck Long. Quinn Early was wide open on the other side, Eric, but he came back for the Woodson recovery. Well, Happel tried to put a stop and go move on Woodson right there. Watch here, number 40, Happel will try to bait Woodson, number 26. They get a little stop and then try to take off to the sideline, but Woodson's not going to buy that package. Steps right inside a great defensive halfback, as you pointed out, Brent, and certainly demonstrated it there. And he can run with the football after he, he gets it. Now it is Jim Everett who can get something brewing here for Purdue. They're down by seven, 11 36. Good backs are in there. Rodney Carter and Ray Wallace. Everett to throw on first down. To the right side, and it is complete. That is Jackson at the 40 yard line. Kenny Sims, number nine, with the coverage. Boy, Everett can really throw that football. He's really got that off there quickly for Jackson. Watch here. Don't ever really get this ball in there in a hurry. There's no underneath coverage, so he can see the receiver, Jackson. Wide open there. They were man-to-man -man coverage. And, of course, Everett really demonstrated why he's a great quarterback. Yeah, he has a slot left now. He'll split his back, and he'll move Carter up. This is like a trip formation. Carter being such an excellent wide receiver. And they'll run Wallace to the short side of the field to the 35-yard line, and Jeff Ross, 76. Brings him down right there. Now 
speaking of the Cotton Bowl, whoever wins the Southwest Conference, of course, and Baylor, one of the four teams with a great shot of winding up the Cotton Bowl, and they're being upset right now. SMU, of course, cannot go because they're on probation. Texas can dictate if they win the rest of the way they go, and of course, the big one there is Arkansas and AM tonight. And here it is, second and six forever. And again, Carter goes to the wing. They give him the same look they did on the last play. This time, they fake it, and Everett rolls to the left. Incomplete, he wanted the tight end. Marty Scott was coming out of the formation. Larry Station had dropped back with the cover. Well, he was open. That was the really the first, first poor pass that Everett has thrown. He had him open, but it's a very difficult throw. He had to escape the rush man on the right side. It looked like it was uh, Breeze. And... Uh, Got outside of him, but unfortunately for the Boilermakers, he did not get the ball to his receiver. As far as total yards are concerned, Purdue has 114 and Iowa 206. You must watch Carter, who is set behind Everett, because Purdue should be thinking first down here on this third down play. A quick pass outside, and it's to Jackson, and he tries to get free at the 20, the 15. Gets inside the 10 yard line. He is down there at the seven. What a great run. <laughs> what a run is right, Greg. He looked like Ronnie Harmon. Oh, he looked like he hurt his leg a little bit. Boy, he made people miss on that one. This is a wide receiver that can really run with the football. Mark Jackson. Stepped in there for injured runner. Watch here. One miss. Now, Percy makes a nice move right here again. We got everybody. There's Nardell, 45 misses, and finally dropped down. Eric Devon Mitchell is hurting. He had an early shot at him, and number 21 cannot move as well as he normally does. He came in here with a leg injury. Everett, stand up off the play fake, waits for something to develop. He's going to run for the pylon, and he's pushed out there at the one-yard line. He just did not make it, and Mitchell finally came over. Now, here is Everett, who in high school, until he was a junior, was a strong safety. And finally, they converted him to quarterback. He has size and strength. He elected to come to Purdue because they said they would let him continue as a quarterback. And here comes the size right now. And that was Devon Mitchell, who drew a bead and drew him out of bounds at the one-yard line. It'll be a double tight end, and James Medlock, 34, when he comes in, you can expect Purdue to run. He is directly behind Everett. Here is Midlock. Midlock, and he's in for the touchdown. And he goes for the switch. 
It is picked up by Early at the 15, 20, and he is down near the 25-yard line. So it is Chuck Long, who a few weeks ago lost to Ohio State, and I asked him if he had to redeem himself here today on national television. Yeah, I think we have a lot to, we have to redeem ourselves on, on national TV, you know. The Ohio State game was it was a tough loss for everybody. Was, I didn't play well. The team didn't play very well, and that's behind us now. And, and we're not, you know, things like that happen. They're going to happen a lot more in the future, I'm sure. But uh, you know, I, we got to redeem ourselves on national TV, and, uh, and I think we're we're coming with a low key attitude, and we really worked hard all, all week. So uh, I think it's to be a better game for us all around. And he has played very well, except for that interception by Woodson, which just moments ago led to this touchdown. There was a player shaking up Tony Visco, number 49, an outside linebacker, shaking up, and that could affect that defense. They have been using him regularly here this afternoon. Uh, Brent, he's, there, he, he's their best outside linebacker, and they only have two of them, Roy and Visco, and that really could hurt the uh, Purdue defense. 9.50 to go here in the first half. Long in the hot eyes in the eye. And they run Ronnie Harmon, and he's out to the 28-yard line, and Matt Morgan, number 59, tackles him right there. And Nebraska, of course, they're also looking ahead to that confrontation with Oklahoma era. They've got a great running game. The Oklahoma's leading. Missouri over Oklahoma State, of course, that's just the second period. And, of course, the big one that we're keeping an eye on is Ohio State and Wisconsin. And we'll have the Prudential College Football Report, Jim Nance and Pat Hayden. Second and seven. Nine, ten to go here in the first half. Long puts it out to Ronnie Harmon. And Harmon is out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Chris Dishman, the cornerback, they are trying to stay away from Woodson as much as possible. That was a 13-yard run. Kevin Roy, the outside linebacker, was trying to come back out and cover, but it's just too much for him. Now, less than seven minutes to go in Columbus right now. And, of course, if Wisconsin holds on and wins this, then the Hawkeyes are in the driver's seat as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned. If they can handle Purdue. Ronnie Harmon down on the 45-yard line, and Kevin Holley, 99, tackled him there. This will bring up about a second and five at 849, and uh, Errol, what about the Iowa offense at this point? I think Purdue is going to be hard-pressed to stop this attack. They're just too well balanced. They're just fighting to death of the long pass. They're playing the zone people deep. They do not bring too much support coverage to the run, although they just decided that they would make him go the long, hard way, but Long is such an accurate passer. The linebackers drop off. Long goes toward Happel, out of bounds. And Happel Boy. took a shot as he went out there, didn't he? Boy, he's a heck of a kid, I'll tell you. What a competitor he is. His father played on the Rose Bowl team with the Hawkeyes. This now is. living down in Florida. Sixth time we've seen him this year. This time Long just puts the ball a little too far. Happel goes out of, goes after it, but he's out of bounds. And watch him go into that bench. Well, his players uh, did protect him. That was John Breeze who stepped in there and helped him out. Defensive lineman preventing what could have been an injury over there. So third down, Long is four of six here this afternoon. This is their seventh third down. He's flush, moves over to the right. Throws on the run, and it is complete. First down for the Hawkeyes. He hit Mike Flagg, the tight end, and Kevin Roy, the outside linebacker, was working on him. That's as good as coverage as, I, as I've seen Purdue put on. They had everybody covered, but still Long having ample time. As you see here, he comes out of the pocket. Watch, if you see the, the receivers, if we get a picture of it, most all of them are covered. You see Long all by himself out here for so much time. Finally, Flagg shakes loose from Roy, number 46 and gets the first down. Iowa and Purdue are tied at 14. Eight minutes to go. Here in the first half, West Lafayette, Indiana. Chuck Long of the Hawkeyes calling him out of a look of line. Handing off to Ronnie Harmon, who hesitates, gets daylight, comes to the outside, 
And he is tackled at the 38-yard line by Dishman. <laughs> How'd you like that little move that Ronnie Harmon put on that time? <laughs> he just danced right out of the tackler's arms. put on some show here this afternoon so far, hasn't it? Well, they're really an awesome offensive team. You know, coming into this ball game, averaging 465 yards a game and 39 points a game, right up at the top in all the NCAA categories offensively. Purdue is back in three deep, and Hudson running. He's got room beyond the linebacker, flips the tackle. And he is inside the 20 before he's finally pushed out by Foster. A very bad tackling by Purdue on that sequence. Oh, of course, tomorrow the big one on CBS, the Dallas Cowboys and the Chicago Bears. And our coverage starts at 12.30 Eastern time. Irv Cross will be live in Dallas. This jockey on the road, he does one drive time in Dallas and the other one in Chicago, and that's on the same day. And, of course, those other games will be covered, and if you're watching one of those, certainly we'll have updates of the Bears and the Cowboys as that game progresses. First and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Harmon sweeps to the right. Again, he finds daylight inside the five. He's down on the two-yard line. Wilson forced to bring him down, and so the men in the secondary are making all the tackles. Well, really they are, but Harmon does a marvelous job of running here. He's, he waits and hesitates right there, then finds the daylight. Boy, does he pop that daylight when he sees it. He doesn't run into piles. He doesn't run into people. He finds the daylight. That's why he's such a great black. Look at Hudson's block here, number 20. The fullback coming out of the backfield simply blew the hole open right there. And then his error tells you, Harmon hit it hard. Play fake, long to throw it, waits, throw back. And it's out of bounds, beyond the end line. He wanted his tight end flag, and Kennedy Wilson, 23, working there on the play. It'll be a second end goal. We've seen Halverson, I don't know how many times in the last three or four games, where he's in the end zone. Watch here, his foot is on the line right there. He's right on the line. You can see it between the two pylons, and a good call by the officials, but we have seen several. It is second and goal. Ball is at the two-yard line. They go to the power eye. It is Hudson, and he jumped a little too quickly that time, and he comes up short. Matt Morgan, 59, the linebacker, stepping in there to deliver that blow at the goal line, but I think he just took off a little early. I think you're right. He tried to dive over before he got to the line. Another play coming in from the sideline. Bush delivers it, and Purdue makes some substitutions. This is third and goal. Inside of the yard, Anthony Rose comes into their all-out goal line. Long likes to sneak it on these. Now he's turning for a timeout. The crowd noise affecting Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes. He gets a discretionary timeout. He'll take him back into the huddle, and Referee is Tom Quinn, granting the wish to the quarterback. And what about the rule on this, Errol? Boy, <laughs> he gave him a discretionary timeout. You see now he's telling them, look, I've got to get this game going. When you go back up, you can take as much time as you want right here. And when you go back up there, have your play called, and you've got to put the ball in play and snap it. Now, if he decides to give him the second discretionary timeout, he could start taking timeouts away from the Boilermakers. But I would think that... Peyton Fry likes to run uh, long on the sneak down here with that short yardage, and I would guess go in there and just kind of wedge it and take it in there. Back to the line with the 57,000 picking up the decibel time here. He's just going to stand there. It's just exactly what the referee said. Just stand there until you feel you can go. The clock will not be on here. There's no 25 second clock here. Just sneak it in there, Ron. That was going to give it. There it is. for six. So they'll quiet down now. At least until Jim Allen yeah. gets something going. That's right. This has certainly been an offensive first half. Still 5.55 to go. 34 points on the board. What you'd expect out of Everton Long. And here is Hudson over the top for his second 
touchdown of the afternoon. Norman has scored, and now Hudson comes back twice more. What was it Leon Burknett said to us yesterday? Did you ask him how many points he had to have to, to stay in the ball game? What did he tell you? He said we need 30. <laughs> Coach, you may need 40 or 50. <laughs> yeah. well, this was going. Outland adds the extra point. And so it was five minutes and 55 seconds to go here in the first half. Iowa leads Purdue by seven points. We'll be right back. We are back in Ross Aid Stadium, West Lafayette, Indiana. 21 to 14. The Hawkeyes with the lead after they go 75 yards in 11 plays. We haven't seen a whole lot of defense here today, Coach. <laughs> no, on both sides. Uh, hook teen up the ball for Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes. I imagine the fans that like offense are going to see a lot more of it in the next, what do we have, 25 minutes yet in this game. Into the end zone, he takes a bounce, and it's picked up by Hudson. Woodson to the 20, the 25, and he crashes down near the 30-yard line. Boy, that was an alert move by Woodson as that ball came back, and remember, that's a free ball. That was a weird bounce. It hit the end zone and bounced back into the field of play. Woodson had the presence of mind to pick it up, and away he goes. Michigan, they held up their half of the bargain, and they get ready for the confrontation. Three minutes to go. Wisconsin, Ohio State, and I'm sure you'll see highlights at halftime. And, of course, there's the confrontation. The whole state of Iowa will explode if Wisconsin upsets Ohio State. I'll tell you, the Hawkeye team certainly will, won't they? There'll be a little celebration down here in the middle of the field. Dead ball. Defensive restriction. Eric, is that our first flag here this afternoon? By golly, I believe you might be right. Is that their first penalty, Roger? And there was one on the kickoff that went out of bounds. So this is the second one. It'll be first and five, 5.49 to go. Everett ready. And he will run Medlock. And Medlock comes out to the 37-yard line. Whenever you see 34 in that backfield, look for the Boilermakers to run the football. Medlock cut the ball 57 times and two, 232 yards, so he's averaging 4.1, which is pretty good for a team that has not run very well. The Boilermakers only average 90 yards a game. He just left. Carter comes in, so now you can expect the Boilermakers to throw the ball. And they do not. And they come with Wallace, the short man, close to a first down. He was hammered down by Station, the All-American linebacker out of Omaha, Nebraska. Boy, there's a good one that Coach Osborne let get away. Never forget that stop he put on Jamie Morris in the Michigan game on third down and short, where a possession of the football by Michigan would have probably won the game for him. But he stopped them and forced them to kick, and Iowa took the ball down and kicked the field goal at one our yardage total and you can see how Iowa dominating running largely because of number 31 Ronnie Harmon and that's how much they have to go for a first down. It'll be third down and we get an update that the Nittany Lions have scored and if they win this one they'll dictate the bowl situation here later today. And Syracuse beat Boston College by 20 points this afternoon with West Virginia lead. 10 in the fourth. It is third and short. Purdue needs the first down or they'll turn it over with a punt. There's a big balloon on the field right behind the safety. And Everett keeps it for the first down. Now the balloon floats off to the sideline. Thank <laughs> you. 
there. They've got four minutes and 47 seconds to work. That was ever quickly checking the clock as he gets the delivery of the play from Scott. I wonder if Coach Burnett doesn't want to sit on it a little bit and try to grind it out here and not let the ball go back into the hands of Long. No, I think they're going to try to pass the football and get back on the board again. They, they had a second down and five, and I think they punched out the first down. Here he goes. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Hey, wide open, too. Indeed he was, and he just drilled Hayes. Number 80, John Hayes, was the receiver that time on the far side. This is what they're trying to do, is to put Hayes in motion to create some defensive adjustments in the backfield, and certainly they, they managed because he was wide open out here in the flat. If the ball had been thrown a little higher, he'd have been able to catch the ball and make more yardage. I wonder why Bruce Gear didn't turn around and go with him in that situation. He didn't drop off. I think he's challenged. They thought they were going to run off tackle with the ball. Second and four. And then he'll put it up again. This time to Jackson, who slips near midfield, and he is brought down at the 49-yard line. And again, he is very close to a first down on that situation. Jay Norville had the coverage. You know, Jackson made a spectacular run after catching a pass, but he came up with a slight leg injury, and that time he didn't move too well after he caught the ball. He certainly did put on a, some great moves on that run. I don't know whether he slipped on the turf down there or whether his leg was bothering him. He did limp off after that run. Well, Pat O'Brien checked over at the Iowa bench, and the trainers told him that they think Devon Mitchell is fine right now. He is still on the field, operating out of his safety position. First and ten. Everett pitches now to Medlock. And they bring the clock down to the three-minute mark. the basketball season about ready to get underway I was down at Kentucky taking a look at the Wildcats and of course our college basketball preview 5 p.m. Eastern time next Saturday right after the Michigan Ohio State game then our first game and it's a damn Georgia Tech and Michigan numbers one and two square off in our open and again they hand to the short man and Wallace Comes to the 35. Era. I think they're going to keep it right on the ground. You see that play they just ran, Brent? Remember that play? That's that little sprint draw where they take it to the field. <laughs> Michigan State hurt Iowa with it. And, of course, Ohio State hurt Iowa with it. And, by golly, Purdue came back, saw it in the film. That's what scouting does in film exchange. And they ran that little sprint draw to draw everybody. The linebackers run so fast for the Hawkeyes that they leave a little void there, and they picked it off. and 10. Hayes in motion. Everett backs up. To the middle. Incomplete. And ball sail out of bounds. Now up in Columbus. There's a minute and a half to go. Now the Buckeyes have the ball, but they have it back on their own 22-yard line. So we'll stay right with you on that game. And Pat Hayden and Jim Nance will have highlights for you. This would put Iowa in the driver's seat as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned. Everett complete. And that one to Griffin to the 20-yard line and a first down with two minutes to go. Another 14 yards. So watch here as Everett really zips this ball into Griffin. He waits. Boom. There it goes. Right there. Nice catch by Griffin. Sims, number nine, comes in. Helps get him down. Along with Davis, number 37. So the ball is down on the 20. There's two minutes to go. Griffin is out to the left. Hayes is to the right. Carter and Wallace both come out. He'll hit Wallace, and he can't hold on to the ball. Nate Greer was the corner who came up and had contact at the 15-yard line. And it'll be second and 10. 
Oh, boy, do those backs get out of that backfield for Purdue and get into their pass through quickly. Boy, they really do. And Walsh, unfortunately for Purdue, ever threw the ball slightly behind him. He had to turn to try to come back. It would have been a great catch on his part. Now there's one minute to go in Columbus. The ball is at the 45, the Buckeye 45. They have possession. And Everett here with a second and 10, pulls out. Gets protection, goes to the end zone, and out of the end zone, incomplete. And Marty Scott was the intended receiver, but the ball was overthrown and out of bounds. You know what's impressive, Brent, is that the Boilermakers have been able to give Everett doggone good protection. He's had time. No one has really, he had ample time that time to hit receivers, but the defenders did a good job in the secondary of covering. An offensive line up front, of course, Mark Brent, Vince Hansel, Rick Skabinski, Todd Tyree, and Mike Connors. Here is third and 10. This is the 12th play of the drive for Everett and Purdue. Jackson in motion. Both backs are out. And again, he has protection. Throws it toward Wallace, and Sims knocks it down incomplete. He was all over the fullback who had released out of the backfield. This ball slightly underthrown as you'll watch here, and Sims has the interception. But Wallace will strip the ball away from him. This is a good reaction by the, the, the offensive player. Watch right there. Pulls the ball. Sims is not able to catch the ball. Otherwise, it would have been an interception. And they will attempt a field goal. Jonathan Briggs comes in. The ball will be put down at the 27. So it will be a 37-yard attempt here at the 135 mark. Kick is on its way. And it's good. A 37-yard field goal by Briggs. Iowa's lead has been cut to four points. We'll be right back. Let's go to Pat O'Brien, who's got a special guest. Pat? Special indeed, Brent. Wayne Duke, the commissioner of the Big Ten. Commissioner, uh, you have the biggest crowds in football and the noisiest, too. What are you doing about this booing problem? Well, actually, Pat, our officials administered the crowd noise real very, very well today uh, by stopping the game so the players can play and the coaches can coach. Would you, would you consider now uh, changing the rule? Well, I think the NCAA may be very well, but we want fans, not fanatics, in the Big Ten. We have a lot of fans. We don't want fanatics. What is your reaction? Ohio State has just been upset by Wisconsin. It's over. What's your reaction? Well, I tell you, it's very reflective that what's happening in Big Ten football. The Big Ten is the most competitive it's ever been, and uh, it's a great, great league, and you can see it right here today. I'll get you back inside where it's warm. Let's go to Brent. All right, Pat, thank you very much. So the standings right now, as of this moment, the Iowa Hawkeyes are in first, and would you believe what is going on right now? Aaron? Well, we witnessed it last year, Brent. We saw Wisconsin do the same thing last year up in Madison, where they knocked off the Buckeyes, and there's just something about that Ohio State-Wisconsin relationship many, many times, even when Woody was there. He lost up to Madison, and he lost at home against the Badgers. Briggs with the kickoff, and again, keeping it on the ground. It is fielded on the bounce by Quinn Early, and he finds daylight. Can he get the corner turn? He's at the 35, 40, 45, and he is out of bounds. The 47-yard line, he comes across. Eric, what is the percentage in that kick that they are coming off with and letting the deep end field it on the hop around the 10-yard line? Well, it's all right if you keep the containment on the receiver. They did not do that. They're trying to keep the ball away from what they think is the great with the other Harmon. And here you see Early just breaks the up to the outside, no contain, and he's got enough speed that he runs by the Boilermakers. Well, they got great field position. First and 10. They have one minute and 20 seconds to work with. And here's the fullback, Hudson. And he busts the tackle and gets to the 41-yard line. Now, the Big Ten score. Michigan goes into Minnesota, and they hammer the Gophers 48-7. to And, of course, Ohio State is upset by Wisconsin 12-7. And now the standings show that Michigan is also very much in the chase if Purdue or Minnesota next week can beat Iowa. And, of course, we'll have coverage of the Ohio State-Michigan game at 1.30 Eastern time next week. 
Long over the middle completes the flag. And he is run out of bounds at the 28-yard line by Kimby Wilson, number 23. And the schedule remaining, of course, has Ohio State at Michigan. Minnesota goes into Iowa. And era first things first for the Hawkeyes. They lead this one by four. I'll tell you what I would do if I was Hayden Fry. I'd make sure my team moved. If the Buckeyes got beat, I'd get that information somehow. Because that would certainly would spur them on in the second half because they're in a real dark fight here. The announcement has been now Long was pulling out. Goes the pass, completes the flag to the 15-yard line and another first down. Time was running down here in the first half and Hayden Fry said that the clock was running. He has called an official over to the sideline. So while Hayden confers with the official, let's take a look at all the schools in the Big Ten Conference. We're back for the last 17 seconds here of the first half. Iowa leading Purdue 21 to 17. That's the timeout situation. Hayden was complaining about the fact that the clock had been run down and that it should not have been started. The official explained to him why it was started when it was. Long with pass for 200 yards here in the first half. He is 14 of 21. Comes up with a first and 10. Great time. Incomplete. Wanted Helverson at the sideline. The coverage was very good that time by the, by the Boilermakers. They had everybody covered. Long will roll out his Helverson, number 87. Woodson on the coverage, number 26. Oh, that's a push there by Helverson. He pushed Woodson. He got away with one. The official had his back to it. He couldn't see it. Then Woodson comes back and knocks that ball down. Boy, he is a great one. What great reaction by Woodson. He was pushed almost five yards by Helverson. And he came back into the play. You're seeing why he is so highly respected in the Big Ten. Harmon. And he is hit by Don Baldwin, number 98, out of St. Charles, Missouri. Iowa will use the timeout, and while they do, let's take a look at that lovely campus in Iowa City. Rob Houtman drawing himself together, concentrating on the task at hand. Of course, it's a familiar scene for those of you who saw the Iowa-Michigan game, and he's the young man who won it with time running out. Here we have time running out in the first half. It is only third down, but with six seconds, Hayden feeling that he might not be able to get that clock stopped, is electing to go for the first down. And Leon Burnett was out conferring with the officials to make sure that the timing sequence was all right. And now... A timeout has been called by the Boilermakers to put a little more pressure on Houtman. And that gives us an opportunity to take a look at the Purdue campus here in West Lafayette. Back for the final six seconds, and it'll be a 33-yard field goal event by Rob Houtman. I don't think he's moved a bit. There he is. I wonder if uh, Hayden would come up with a gadget here. A pass or a runoff of this in six seconds. Well, he has his backup quarterback, Mark Vlasic, as his holder. They lead 21 17. It'll be as good a time as any. Uh, but it'll be a 33 yard kick. And it's good. will go in leading 24 17 there are two seconds left here on the clock and they're up the way things are going in the Big Ten I wouldn't bet against Purdue in the second half of this one well I think I think the fans uh, are seeing two of the finest quarterbacks that I've seen in a long time long and ever the both outstanding players and of course we've seen both teams are able to move the football and we're going to see more of that in the second half Penn State still leading the Irish, 7 to nothing. They are in the second quarter of that one over in Pennsylvania. I understand the weather's rather nasty. Nebraska continuing to roll. And, of course, the big one was the fact that Ohio State was upset by Wisconsin. 
Now the Air Force has been tied by BYU. How do you like that one? And Pat Hayden, Jim Nance will have highlights of that. Oklahoma leading 14-7. I'll tell you what, things are coming up Iowa right now. Not only are they moving in to the leadership role as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned, but they also are looking very strong as far as the national title is concerned. You said at the top that they are still candidate, obviously, for the Big Ten champion. Now they have moved into first place. And of course, if they can get out of this ball game, why they will be in first place. And there's not much Michigan can do about it, even if they beat Ohio State, as long as the Hawk Hawkeyes here, of course, beat Minnesota next week. So that has ended the first half. It's 24-17. Here long leads there ever. And we'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. From West Lafayette, Indiana, I'm Brett Musburger along with Eric Parsega. We have just started the second half. Iowa with possession. This is the splendid Ronnie Harmon coming around the left side with the Hawkeyes and Ronnie leading Purdue 24 to 17. And let's tell you that earlier today, Ohio State was upset by Wisconsin. So if Iowa can hold on here against the determined Purdue team and then win next Saturday against Minnesota, the Hawkeyes would head for the Rose Bowl. Meanwhile, Michigan and Ohio State will have their showdown in Ann Arbor next week. And it is possible if Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes go to the Rose Bowl, that the winner there might indeed be headed for the Cotton Bowl. But we'll have to wait and see. Chuck Long on first down, thrust out of the pocket. He's on the move here to the right under heavy pressure, throws it, and it is incomplete. It'll be second down. We see what Chuck Long did, Aero Parsigan, in the first half of today's game. Well, he was 14 for 22, as you see here, for 201 yards. He's added, that, added to that in the beginning of the second half. And they have also had the splendid talents of number 31, Ronnie Harmon. Remarkable football player. That 70 yards rushing now is up to 95 yards. So, and 91 yards passing. He's approaching the 100 yard mark with 13 minutes to go in the third quarter in both passing or rushing and receiving. Over 300 yards by the Hawkeyes. Harmon may remind some of a Tony Dorsett. This time they run the fullback. And it is Hudson who gets to the 40. And the star for Purdue has been Woodson here this afternoon. He intercepted a pass that really kept the Boilermakers in the game. That could have been a 14-point swing because Purdue scored after the interception. And Iowa might have scored if he had not come up with the interception. So it is 24-17. Iowa leading Purdue. 12-45 to go in the third quarter. Coach Leon Burnett and his Boilermaker staff needing a little better tackling here in the second half if they are to pull off an upset. Long's receivers are covered. He's on the move and he's tackled inside the 45 by Don Baldwin, number 98. Well, what a nice job by Baldwin on third down and five. The Boilermakers have not been able to stop this Iowa team. And Baldwin comes in there, 6'4", 244, St. Charles, Missouri, and sacks Long for a 10-yard, 15-yard loss. So here is that punt formation, which looks like an extra point, with the blockers on the wing. Oscar Bala gets it off, Griffin at the 10. Comes up to the 15. Tries to find daylight, and he is brought down hard on the 15 by Mark Cook, the man who does the kicking off for the Hawkeyes. We'll be right back, and Purdue will have possession. Well, Pat O'Brien spoke to Leon Burnett, and Pat, what did Leon say he was going to do here in the second half? Well, Leon feels pretty good about this game so far, Brent. He says the uh, reception of that turnover, they're still in the game, so they're going to put a lot more pressure on John Long, which we've seen already in this third period. Let's go back up there. All right, thank you, Pat. Now, quarterback Jim Everett for Coach Burnett turned in a first half like this. <laughs> 155 yards and one touchdown. Era, 
This is the first time that I have seen Everett in person, and I am very impressed with the way he throws the ball. Well, so am I. When I was downstairs talking to him yesterday, I didn't realize how tall he is. He's 6'5", and every bit of that. Well, here is a first down pass. He pumps. His man was covered. Steps away. He's on the move. And you can see his speed, and he'll just take it out of bounds. And alertly, Everett stepped out of bounds. Both Brigham Young and Air Force are going at it in the whack, and Pat Hayden, what's happening? Fred, Robbie Bosco is really showing some class. Remember those three interceptions he threw? Well, this is his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. This one's 69 yards to Vi Sikhima. 28-21 BYU, and if BYU wins, we expect to see them in the Fiesta Bowl. Let's go back to Brendan Era. What a comeback by BYU. And here, Pat, Iowa leads Purdue 24 to 17. Meanwhile, Penn State is blanking Notre Dame 13 to nothing. This is second and 11 right now for Everett. He'll throw it again. His back come out. Over the middle of Rodney Carter, there's one of their favorite plays. They call it Fan 89 Hyde. They slip Wallace and Carter out of the backfield, and then they simply dump it off. All right, yeah, let's see. Fan 89 Hyde on the end zone. <laughs> Wallace goes through first, and then, of course, you see right there Carter coming through underneath it. That's what they call Hyde. He hides in the backfield and sneaks through after the linebackers have gone back to coverage. But they recovered well on him. It is third and six, and Everett will go to the shotgun. Good protection. Throws downfield toward Griffin. Devon Mitchell is there with the interception. Devon Mitchell, number 21, pulled it down as the ball was hanging in the air at the 33-yard line, and it's a turnover by Everett and Purdue. He, he catches him right at the last minute. They think he's going to run out here to the left. Then all of a sudden, he sees a chance to throw the big one down the field. But it is underthrown just a little bit. And Devon Mitchell steps right in front of Griffin right there. Griffin does pull him down. Good play by Griffin. Almost a face match, too, the way Very Griffin close. yanking him from behind with his hands up on that helmet. So Devon Mitchell, who is not 100%, but who is hanging in and playing well in that secondary and of course there is time now finish record and what a great one he was the stadium back in Iowa City named after him first and ten for Chuck Long drops it out man wide open is Harmon and Harmon breaks the tackle and finally is out of bounds on that far side Kevin Sumlin number 44 along with Chris Dishman 19 working out in Harmon has been breaking one tackle after another here today. Well, Dishman just could not hang on. He's, in addition to being elusive, he certainly is strong. I'm talking about Ronnie Harmon right there, number 31. Dishman is 19, and it has been a learning process in that defensive secondary for the Boilermakers this year. 10.40 to go in the third. Chuck Long, a candidate for that Heisman Trophy, on the draw. Hands it off to Harmon. Harmon coming around the right side. He is tackled at the 44-yard line. Kennedy Wilson, 23, doing a good job defensively. So long looking for Eisen Kofi, putting up numbers like that. And of course, the man he is pursuing and the front runner, Bo Jackson, has come back with one of his better productions here in the last few weeks. That's only in the second quarter, and he already has 103 yards and one touchdown. So Jackson on the move again. Harmon going off the field with Kennerly. Long bringing the Hawkeyes up to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Again the draw. And this time Hudson, the fullback, gets inside the 45. And arrow with Harmon graduating. I expect Iowa to feature this young fullback, Hudson, he reminds me of Owen Gill. Boy, he really is strong. I've liked him in all the games that we have seen him play. Here he is just on a little draw delay, and he just runs through tackling. He's 227 pounds, always goes forward, has lost no yardage this year. He's always a positive gainer. Meanwhile, Penn State is blowing out Notre Dame. It is 20 to nothing only in the second quarter as the Nittany Lions solidify that number one spot and the Irish come up flat. 
Hudson straight ahead on first down for a couple of yards. And Matt Morgan, number 59, brings him down. 9-19 to go in the third. Iowa leading Purdue 24 to 17. This will be a second and eight. Harmon bringing the play in from the sideline and Quinn Early will trot out for the Hawkeyes. And let's see here what the Boilermakers come up with defensively in this situation. Well, they've played a little bit better than they did in the first half, although they've given an awful lot of ground. They're in their 3-4 this time, but they're bringing the outside linebacker. He's going to get him right there. Whoop. He releases to Hudson, oh. and he cannot get the handle. That was Pauly coming across and going after the quarterback. Almost got to him just as he released the ball. I thought he was going to get the long. And what always frightens me as a former football coach, I hate to see a quarterback blindsided. Right-handers, of course, have their back to the defensive right side. Left side for their left side coming in, and boy, it always frightens me when they have a shot at him. The big one tonight in the Southwest Conference: Arkansas and Texas A&M. Baylor with the lead; they've got a shot at the Cotton Bowl, and of course, Texas is in the driver's seat. And SMU cannot go; they're not eligible, of course. Long, and Hudson drops two in a row. Well, Owen Gill catches the ball a little bit better. I was just trying to say, every time you say something nice about some of these players, all of a sudden they have bad luck. He dropped two passes, very uncharacteristic of him because he is a fine all-around athlete. 8.41, Iowa leading 24-17. Now Ohio State was upset by Wisconsin. Chuck Long and the Hawkeyes are trying to avoid that here. Pascabala. Hangs one, and Griffin will let it bounce. It's going to be downed inside the five. Not very good field position as far as Jim Everett and the Boilermakers are concerned. Mark Senlinger gets downfield in the center, covers that punt at the three. We'll be right back. 97 yards for Jim Everett and the Boilermakers to the other end zone. Squared off against those linebackers, Station and Davis. They'll run on first down, and the Hawkeyes bring him down right there at the five-yard line. Ray Wallace was the ball carrier, and John Breeze smacked him down. Let's take a look at how those linebackers are operating. Station 36, Davis is 37. They both flown out of the action. Station takes on the blocker, and Davis moves inside to help out on the tackle. Now, those are the men who have to make most of the tackles. Medlock is in at the power formation, which would indicate that they're going to run when they send James Medlock into the game. And here he comes, number 34. And a good run out to the 11-yard line. And that should be a first down or very close. No, he's going to be short of it over there. It'll be a third down. So they'll have to send in the short yardage play. Everett got the call from the sideline. Wallace and Carter are in that backfield. And there is Medlock. You need a couple of yards, Brent. There's the same setup. Number 34 has been a very effective runner. Here he comes. He fumbles. Gets it back. And did he get the first down on the bounce? I don't think he did, did he, Errol? It doesn't look like it from here, Brent. He would have had it. He had, uh, he had the corner. There was good blocking. He dropped the football. If we take a look at it from the end zone, you'll see that he had the daylight out here. The good blocking. You see the daylight right there? He would have made it very nicely, I believe. Big jump block coming in. And Davis, the linebacker, helping out. And now they will punt. From Iyer, standing back at the end zone. You take a look at the center with the snap. Another low line drive punt snatched by Norvell, and it was a fair catch there at about the 47. That was some catch, wasn't it, of a line drive? We'll be right back. Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. 
And boy, the astonishingly simple new Sony Handycam. All the excitement of video movies now in the palm of your hand. From West Lafayette, Indiana, I'm Brad Musburger along with Eric Parsegi. The Iowa Hawkeyes with the ball and in control of the Rose Bowl now because Ohio State lost earlier today. The Hawkeyes lead Southern Purdue 24-17. 626 to go in the third period. Long comes up with one setback, and they give the ball to Hudson, and he breaks through and fumbles, and is recovered by Iowa. So the tight end flag alertly falls on a ball that was just sitting there on the grass and might have turned this game around. Hudson just pops through there with good blocking over your left side of the screen. Good blocking in there by Hank, Crack, and Flag. I watched the ball skip from Hudson right there, and the ball's on the ground. Flag alertly comes in there and gets the recovery. Right there, you see him taking the ball away. It'll be first and ten. Six minutes to go in the third. Hudson again bouncing outside to the left. Woodson giving chase. He slips free of him and goes for another yard before Wilson can finally pounce on the Iowa fullback. Let's take you back now and show you how we got to our point. Everett opened up the scoring. A 48-yard touchdown pass to Griffin, and Purdue led it 7-0. But the Hawkeyes bounced back. They tied it. Harmon on a one-yard touchdown run. Great second effort by Ronnie Harmon. Then the Hawkeyes took the lead as the fullback, David Hudson, went in from a yard out. And then Purdue tied it. Medlock from a yard out. But again, it was Iowa and their fullback, Hudson scoring, and it was 21-14. Briggs kicked a field goal to make it 21-17. Houtman kicked a 33-yarder. We are in the third quarter, and Purdue's defense rises to the occasion on second and short that time. And they swarmed all over Harmon. Meanwhile, Penn State at the half, leading Notre Dame 23 to nothing. And there you would have to believe that if Penn State wins, they can just about dictate whatever bowl they want to go to. No question about it. They're in the driver's seat. And uh, they'll select which bowl they want to go to. They're the number one team. And certainly they must have played a very fine first half. Would you go down and take out a Nebraska or an Oklahoma? Or would you say maybe I'd rather go to a Cotton Bowl or an Orange Bowl? Oh, Three I'd ball. go to the Cotton Bowl. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Such an objective answer. <laughs> oh, by absolutely. Mr. <laughs> and if not the Cotton Bowl, the Sun Bowl or the Peach <laughs> Bowl. Right. Well, BYU has just dropped their force from the ranks of the unbeaten. What a day in college football this is. Don't be surprised if BYU doesn't go to the Fiesta Bowl. Here is Harmon. Jitter bucking in the middle. All day long, he has been reminding me of Tony Dorsett. And let's go to Pat Hayden in New York and find out how the Air Force did it. Pat? Brent, as you just mentioned, with four seconds left, Bart Weiss, under pressure, throws the ball up for grabs. Rob Ladenko is there to make the interception. BYU wins 28 to 21. Go back to Brent Nero. All right, Pat, thank you. So it is 24-17 here with Iowa leading. This is a second and two, ball on the 16. They sweep to the right, and that time he could not make it. What a great job by Woodson again. Tremendous number 26 coming up and making the play. He's a really a remarkable defensive back. I imagine he could play a number of positions. Here is what has happened in the top 10. Penn State rolling at the half, leading by 23 points. Nebraska pounding Kansas. They are in the fourth. Ohio State upset by Wisconsin in Columbus. And now BYU coming back to stun the Air Force. So remember, the Cougars were at home. Oklahoma rolling. And Michigan headed toward that Ohio State. And of course, tonight, Arkansas takes on Texas A&M. Oklahoma State with the lead. And we've got a timeout Paul. Chuck Long wants to confer with Hayden Fry and his coaching staff on the sideline. And we'll be right back in West Lafayette in just a moment. So that's what we have for you next week. And here it is, Iowa. They are two victories away from the Rose Bowl. A win this afternoon and a victory in Iowa City over Minnesota. And Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes will go back to Pasadena. 
a born-again football team here this afternoon with Ohio State losing. Chuck Long coming out now. He faces a third and two. And Errol, what, uh, what would you come up with in this situation, given all the weapons that uh, Hayden's disposal? Must have uh, had a call on originally a pass of some kind because they were surprised to find Purdue deployed in a defensive coverage with just a three-man rush. Now they've changed it. Looks like they've gone to the four-man. We'll see what, when they line up. But I think they'd probably be better served to just run the football. I think they can run for it against the three-man front. Incidentally, they have both backs, both Hudson and Harmon, in this ball game are over 100 yards. And Harmon is, is 1,019 yards for the year, the second best in Iowa history. From the formation, they spread it out. Off a of play fake, Clark was open, dropped the ball at the five-yard line. So Rob Houtman will come on the field and attempt a field goal. Iowa leading by seven. Great call here because he fakes here right up the middle, right there, to hold the linebackers. And Carter is wide open. And Clark is wide open, I'm sorry. And he drops the football. It'll be a 33-yard attempt by Houtman. Classic to put it down. No good. What a big missed opportunity by the Hawkeyes at the 315 mark here in the third. Failures by the Hawkeyes. Now it's Jim Everett. He'll throw on first down. Good protection. Carter's open. He's got it. Midfield. 45. 40. Comes to the left to the 35. Jim Everett to Rodney Carter, the leading receiver in the country. A 45-yard gain in it turned on a West Lafayette. And then he hung that ball in there to Carter. Beautiful throw. Hit it right on the move. Watch here from the end zone. Carter, number 24, comes out of the backfield. Goes right down the seam. There's the throw. Over top of the linebackers in front of the secondary. And Carter, Carter knows what to do with the ball after he's got it. He can run with it. Big play for Boilermaker. Devon Mitchell was the defensive back who slipped on that play. Coming over after the catch. Pat Peterson moves on into the center down there. And let's see what it is called. Now, I want you to keep one thing in mind as this game unfolds from this point. This is the first time all season that the Hawkeyes have ever played on grass. They have been on artificial carpet. Contact. Now, it was Peterson, and the penalty is against him. Now, let me follow up on my point with you, Era, because on grass, it's different footing. It requires a different cleat, and several times in that secondary, I have seen Hawkeye defensive back split. Yes, very true. There's no question about it, this grass does have an effect. And you see the momentum shift. Instead of getting the three points down at the other end, all of a sudden produced down to the 30-yard line. Now it's first and five. Everett eyes the defense. They're aligned in about a fourth grade. Now they show a five-man front. And they run Wallace right straight into the heart of that defensive line. Breeze is there. Peterson shut down the center as he slanted in and both of them closed up the opening. Now remember it was first and five and that time they gained one so they'll come up with a second and four. The last time they had the situation, a five yard penalty and first and five, they attempted to run for the first down. They did manage it, but they barely squeezed out the five yards and three downs. Let's see whether or not I would go to the air with ever. That's the strong suit of this team. Exactly what they're going to do, Aaron. Off a of fake. Throws one up in the air. Incomplete. And they're so lucky that Norvell did not intercept that one. Now, Hap Peterson got in that time on Everett. 
And that's one of the first times this afternoon that we have seen the nose guard come through and disrupt the play. And they had open receivers. Griffin, the lower part of his screen was wide open. I watch Hat Peterson come in. And just as ever throws the ball right there, hits him. Look at Griffin down there, number two, right on the goal line. It's wide open. It's third down and four now for Evans. Needing to get the ball to the 25 for a first down. He'll go from the shotgun. They run out of this formation too frequently, but not this time. He sends both backs out as receivers. He wants Carter. Carter steps out of bounds inside the 25. First down for the Boilermakers. Right here, number 24, Rodney Carter. This is why he's the leading receiver in the nation. Watch him keep his speed in just as the ball is at the sideline. Right there. Possession of the ball, and his right foot was on the ground. One minute and 58 seconds to go in quarter number three. Iowa leading Purdue 24-17. Boilermakers on the move inside the 25-yard line. Off a of play action, pressure, Everett steps away from it and completes the pass to the 15-yard line. Mark Jackson, number 36, was the receiver. Station almost got to him that time. Everett, ready, I don't know how he got away from him, Brent, and then put the ball right on the money. Looking at it from the end zone, now watch Station come right up the middle, unblocked, right there. And loses Everett. Everett manages to get that ball away. Boy, what a job. Spins brings him down. Strong for 219 yards. Second down and two. He'll hand to Wallace. He's got the ball. Cannot turn the corner. And he'll be short of a first down as again Station, number 36, comes up with a big defensive play. Station now has 466 career tackles. That is the new Iowa record. And he accomplished it with that hit right there. Not only that, Brent. But last time Station came free, they put the same blitz on again. We may see more of it because Purdue has not picked up that particular spot. Here is a third and three, and Everett and Purdue will use the timeout. As the Boilermaker quarterback comes over to the sideline to confer with Leon Burnett. Now, let me remind everybody that tomorrow we're going to be seeing a good running back by the name of Gail Sayers live in our studio at 12.30 Eastern Time. Sayers will take a look at Tony Dorsett and Walter Payton as they get ready for that Cowboy Bear game. And of course, Bear coach Mike Ditka has been covered this week by our Irv Cross. Irv will be down in Dallas. Will Big Mike have Jim McMahon available for that game tomorrow? At 12.30 tomorrow, we will have the answer to that question. And of course, some of you will not be seeing the Bears and the Cowboys. You'll be watching the rest of our lineup. And as those games unfold, we will update the Bear Cowboys story. The Chicago Bears unbeaten at 10 and 0. Hard to imagine an arrow when you come into a town like Lafayette, Indiana. So many people come up and ask you, can the Bears go all the way? They're really a kind of mid america team right now, aren't they? There's an awful lot of interest in the Bears. They've done a, Dick has done a tremendous job there, I think. They're a versatile team. Well, there you see the marching band, and there's the brand new uniforms they had on. $105,000 raised. They're enjoying this right now. Here it is, third and three. And from the shotgun, it'll be Everett and the Boilermakers. Here comes the blitz. Right. Under pressure, Everett will step out of bounds at the 35. And a young quarterback, as he matures, will learn to wing that ball out of bounds downfield and take the incompletion rather than a 19-yard loss, which Everett did in that sequence right there. But remember, he didn't become a quarterback until he was a junior in high school. So for Jim Everett, it is still a learning process. Yes, he certainly should have thrown that one away. And the Hawkeyes put the same foot on right up the middle. It came clean, forced him right out immediately. I think the Iowa team has found a way to get to Jim Everett. Now they will have to punt because they are back at the 35. So Strummeyer will hit that ball at about the 45-yard line. Iowa not dropping anybody off just in case it's a fake. They're in the attack position right here, and now the penalty marker goes down. 
Von Mitchell is the center fielder and not the return man. And Everett over on the sideline telling the coaches what went wrong that time. And with the delay of game, they go back five more yards. And now, of course, Hayden Fry and the Hawkeye staff has to believe that they'll go through with the punt. And here comes Happel onto the field. So Bill Happel drops back near the 10 yard line. Hawkeyes leading 24 17. We're inside of 40 seconds here left in the third quarter. Shamire will not hit the ball around midfield. He has been punting low line drive like punt so far. They have one of the best long snappers in college football. Pat Snyder is the snapper. Gets it back to Shumire. Not a good punt. Goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Take a look here at Griffin at the top of your screen, the wide receiver. The defender and the safety man back here, and watch the pressure inside on the dog. The safety man will come up. Watch here. And you see Griffin breaks loose one-on-one -on -one out here as the safety man stepped inside, and if Everett would have had time, he might have been able to hit him. But he is flushed out of the pocket by the interior blitz, and of course, that led to this play. First and 10 era for the Hawkeyes at the 34-yard line. They come up with Ronnie Harmon and David Hudson, and they pound with Hudson straight ahead. And just because of his determination, he gets the ball to the 38, and Bob Zilt, number 71, tackles in there. With 23 seconds, now down to 20, left in the third. It's 24-17, Iowa leading Purdue. Iowa needing a win against Leon Burnett and then a victory at home against Lou Holtz in Minnesota and they would go to Pasadena. Ohio State comes up a loser at home this afternoon against Wisconsin. Time will run out on the third quarter. So for Hayden Fry and the Hawkeyes, one of the biggest quarters of the season is still to come. The Rose Bowl, a national championship, all on the line. We'll be right back. Sports presents College Football, sponsored by the people who help you live the good life, the equitable. L.A. from Anheuser-Busch, with half the alcohol of our regular beers, sometimes it's the perfect thing to say. And by Radio Shack, the computer experts. The final 15 minutes, the Hawkeyes and Chuck Long coming to the line of scrimmage. This is second and six. They lead Purdue 24 to 17. Chuck will throw it. It's the screen. It's the Harmon. Harmon cannot get through. A beautiful tackle by Kevin Sumlin, number 44, one of the inside linebackers. Marvelous job by Sumlin there. He, tremendous. Looked like the screen was going to be set up. He slept in right behind the wall and made a great tackle. That could have been a big gainer. So there is Sumlin. Getting the call, as you see, what has transpired here this afternoon. Two and three quarters, total yards, 400 by the Hawkeyes, 247 by the Boilermakers. This will be third and five for long. It's Harmon, he won't get it. And that was Kevin Hawley, number 99, wrestled him to the ground, and it will force another punt by the Hawkeyes, and so far that Purdue defense is doing a much better job here in the second half. They, they really did. They played, uh, they only gave about 89 yards in the third quarter, and that was a big improvement over the first half where they gave 312 yards. Oscar ball at the punt. Griffin and Woodson, who are both dangerous, are set to return this. It's an extra point alignment for blocking, and the left footer hangs it high. Purdue will let it bounce. And it will be down at around the 27 or 28 yard line where it was touched right there. So now, Larry Station and the defense coming on the field. Let's go downstairs to Pat O'Brien. Pat, thank you very much, Brent. You know, as Larry comes out on the field, he's a great story here. He's a computer science major in Iowa. He has no ambition whatsoever to play professional football. He wants to be 
an astronaut, and he might have gone to Purdue for that. The 16 of them come from here. Let's go back way upstairs to Vermont. Tough ride, Pat. Astronaut or not, there are some scouts who are grading Mr. Station very highly here this afternoon. He is playing as well as I've seen Larry Station play all season. He's number 36, faked the flick, dropped off in the pass coverage against Everett. Everett under pressure and jigs Jeff Gross, number 76. Hammers him down there at the 21-yard line. Well, you know, Eric gives us an opportunity to welcome Jim Brock from the Cotton Bowl Committee. And Jim, with the upsets, especially of Ohio State, what are you looking at right now? Well, Grant, we said going in today, all the bowl guys did say this would be the key day for, for the bowls and, of course, uh, next Saturday selection day. On the delayed handoff to Wallace, he comes out near the 24th. Jim, will a lot of the deals be made tomorrow with the various teams around the country for the major bowls? Then I'll ask you this way. I think there'll be a lot of informal discussions starting tomorrow and the rest of the week for selection date next Saturday. But Michigan winning big and Auburn leading Georgia. Here's Iowa hanging on. This game's long being over. But again, I think we'll have an excellent matchup in the Cotton Bowl because we do have some several good teams out there. Era and I fully expect to see you in Ann Arbor next week for the <laughs> Michigan-Ohio State game. Will we see you there? I know the Scovels will be there. and Maybe I will, too. I may be in Iowa, too. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Here it is. Third and 14 for Purdue. Everett pulls out. Comes back to the middle. It's to Griffin. He's at midfield. The 45 down to the 42-yard line. 12 minutes to go. A 34-yard game. It's Everett to Griffin, number two in there. This could be upset Saturday in the Big Ten if the Boilermakers can keep it cooking. Well, Griffin is adding to it. Certainly, Steve, he turns to the inside, gets deeper than the linebackers. Great throw there by Everett. And, of course, Griffin can run with the football after he catches it as we witness right there. And on the day era, he has 110 yards on only four catches. So, indeed, he can run. First and ten for Everett and the Boilermakers. He sends Carter out. There's a penalty flag down. The pass is complete on the near side, but there is a penalty flag. The pass was completed to Jackson. Aiden Fry and the Hawkeyes waiting to see what the preliminary and Quinn will say. 54 and a lift. So it goes against Purdue right now. one of their fine offensive linemen that time. You can see a good picture here of the Iowa Hawkeye defensive secondary. Watch how soft they're playing. They're dropping clear back out there in a three-man zone, rotated to the short side of the field, which allows the flanker back there an out pattern, which they hit, but it's nullified because of the penalty. Here's the throw right here. You see Jackson catching the ball, but it was, you see immediately, Brent Everett took advantage of the coverage. He read it immediately because the Hawkeyes rotated to the short side of the field and they had single coverage on the flanker. Right now they are adjusting the scoreboard clock. That's why we have the delay in the game. They're putting some time back up there and once they get it together, then of course they'll restart. And a reminder next week, we mentioned to the Jim Brock at the Cotton Bowl Committee, Ohio State and Michigan. And the major bowls will be looking at that one. Buckeyes and the Wolverines still attractive, and of course our special time, 1.30 Eastern time, next Saturday afternoon from Ann Arbor, and we certainly hope you'll be along with us watching. We'll keep you up to date on the Iowa-Minnesota game, because regardless of what happens here this afternoon, that also will be a big one now. It is first and 15 now. Very few penalties in this game. Iowa's had three for 14 yards, and Purdue two for 10, and we just saw a five-yard penalty against Purdue there. Well, clean played ball game. So from the slot right, Everett to throw. Receivers are covered. So he runs into the 45-yard line, and John Freeze packs him down right there. Era Station and Davis are doing a very good job in this defensive scheme of not letting Carter get open frequently underneath. They are really paying attention to him. But as a result of that, Griffin has been open deep in front of the deep secondary while the linebackers are looking for those back checking through. They've been able to hit their flanker back and split ends. 
Everett brings him up to the line with a second and 11. Carter is the eye back. That's an audible. They fake to Carter under pressure. Throws it complete. First to a first down is Marty Scott, the tight end, and Jay Norville coming over to bring him down. And again, the protection almost breaks down as you see 36 right there. This time they picked him up very nicely. Stavinsky picked him up, and there's the throw by Everett with a lot of pressure to Marty Scott, and they get a first down. A big play for the Boilermakers. And with a linebacker coming, you would think that the tight end would indeed become the hot receiver. He was. They came out of the eye that time, and they're in a little better position for these two backs as they are right now to pick up the inside flick. That's why I think they changed that because Hawkeyes have hurt them with the inside flick with Stacey and Davis. On a third and one, double tied in, they pound ahead, and it is a first down with James Medlock. He is really a designated runner, isn't he? <laughs> That's right. He comes on the field, and he's going to carry the ball. Let's take a look at the All-American linebacker, number 36 from Omaha. He is the linebacker at the top on the right side. You see that anticipating the hole? He just runs in, and then Medlock takes him on and overpowers him. That was sheer determination by the running back. It was exactly the same play, the same situation he saw when he stopped Jamie Morris on that key first down in the Michigan game. Ten minutes to go. Purdue on the move. They trail by seven points. Again, a double tight end formation. This time, they will run again, Medlock. And Station says, I win this time. So the two go wrestling here in back-to-back -back play. Now Purdue has lived by the sword. <laughs> they might as well continue with that passing game. They just cannot establish a running game that's it's going to get you that three and four yards consistently. Well, now they're going to show a formation that's a little bit different. They have Carter lined up as a fullback. Now, let's see if Iowa recognizes this. This is Carter and Medlock in. They send Carter from the fullback spot. He's open with a deeper man, Jackson. And he gets to the 50. Era, both receivers were open. The safety valve and the deep man that time. And a beautiful run that was run by Mark Jackson. Right here from the ground level, you see the ball coming right at you. Jeff Cross is trying to run. Look at Jackson make a turnout. Everett has the ball right there with perfect timing. Sims comes up number nine and makes the play. Now we come down to nine minutes. Purdue on the move. They trail Iowa 24 to 17. Ohio State has already lost today. The Hawkeyes need a win here and next week to get to the Rose Bowl. They take the draw. Complete at the six-yard line. And again, Big Jim Everett just drills that ball into the hands of Mark Jackson. Richard Pryor, 99, dropping back on coverage. Boy, did you call that shot when you said he drilled it? Look at this wide shot. He takes a tailback action, look to the bottom of your screen, wide open because the prior came out to, to cover the tight end, number 84, Marty Scott, and it opens up the seam, and does Everett put it in there? Designated runner, number 34, James Medlock, is in that tailback. He is standing behind Wallace. Carter going over on the wing in this formation. Second and short, Wallace straight ahead, and he bangs in close to a first down. Reed being very active here this afternoon. He tackled Wallace, and Hayden Fry and the Iowa team reeling a bit here in the second half. Well, we've seen the Iowa team on more than one occasion inside that 10-yard line and turn around and stiffen up and make it tough for the opposition to get into the end zone. Let's see if they can do it again on this particular drive. With a first and goal inside the five-yard line. Off of fake, Everett's under pressure and a great pickup block in the backfield and Jim Everett gets down to the one-yard line. It was Pryor who saved the touchdown that time as far as Iowa was concerned. But there are eyes out the Hawkeyes had ever. 
Who says he can't run? Huh? Watch right here as he takes the sweep. Watch him make space in number 36, Smith. Right about there. Right there, 36. He made a miss. He gets down to about the two-yard line. Nice job by Jim. And Pryor came back into the play after being out of it. He lost his helmet as he brought him down. So the ball is at the one-yard line now. And here comes Medlock, and he is stopped short of the goal line. This will bring up a third and goal at the 650 mark. That's what we've seen the Hawkeyes do before when they get down inside, and their goal line is challenged. They brought it down to a third down and one. Well, Aaron, certainly Everett has some options here, and he wants to use a timeout. Knowing how important this is, he reduces the Purdue timeouts to one the rest of the way, but this is a critical moment, and we'll be right back. So we are back. Six minutes and 39 seconds. And Aaron third down, and of course, being big and strong, he can roll and put some option pressure on that defense. He also can run it right straight ahead in this short yardage situation. So I will have to guess what kind of a defense to come up with. Well, if you recall in the first half, Brent, Medlock came off the right side on the off tackle play with a wing back to that side. They were very successful with it. They scored a touchdown. We might see it right here. Although you might come over here and Leo uh, Burnett may say, look, I want my best guy ever to throw at least twice. And I know he'll get it one out of the two times. Let's see which way they go. I'm guessing they run that off tackle play with Medlock if he's in there. Well, again, you've got two downs to go for it. Exactly what you pointed out. You can just line it up and say, we'll go power football both times. <laughs> Did you see Hayden Fry licked his hands so like he was going to get in and play defense. Now, Medlock is the tailback set behind Wallace. Carter is the man in motion. They go to Medlock up over the top. Touchdown, Purdue. Purdue. 
went early. And Kevin Harmon set to return it. Along the ground, it'll be fielded by Harmon at the 14. At the 20, there's a hole in the middle. And he is down at the 27-yard line. And for an update on that Maryland Clemson game that we're also covering, let's go to Pat Hayden. Pat? All right, Brent, freshman Tracy Johnson scores his first touchdown ever for the Clemson Tigers from five yards out. That makes it Clemson 31-24 over Maryland with 5.30 remaining. Let's go back to Brent Nero. Oh, another good one going on down there in Clemson, South Carolina this afternoon. Here we are tied at 24. Here in this half era, Chuck Long has been held to only 3 of 7 for 27 yards. And he had 201 yards in the first half. On first down, they will run the play right straight ahead with number 20, David Hudson, the young fullback, and Matt Morgan, 59, tackles in there. I wonder if this will influence Hayden Fry in his play calling in view, in view of the fact that if this ball game didn't end in the tie, he would still be in the favorable position as far as the Big Ten was concerned. He would have the same record as Michigan, but remember Iowa beat Michigan earlier this year. They would be tied to the lead. But it's second and six. Off a of play fake, there's a penalty marker down. Chuck Long will keep it on the run. And he gets out to the 38-yard line. Pop cracks number seven, I believe it was, the right guard, or Tate, the right tackle for Iowa, moved just before the snap of the ball. That's going to come back. Motion on the offense. Well, here's the situation in the Big Ten that we alluded to. Iowa and Purdue tied at 24 with 5.46 to go. And the standings as of right now, Iowa is first. But, of course, they still have this game to complete. Michigan right behind them for the loss in the tie. And Ohio State beaten today by Wisconsin. And so if Iowa and Michigan were to wind up tied for first, then Iowa would still go to the Rose Bowl because they beat them in Iowa City earlier this season. Now, Penn State hammering Notre Dame. It is 30 to nothing. They are in the third quarter. It is second and 11. And again, they run the draw. Hudson gets out to the 30-yard line where it will be third down. Really a very conservative offensive approach. Long has been very ineffective in the second half. They've tried to run the football, and I'm wondering whether or not Hayden is influenced by the knowledge that a tie would not hurt him that much. There's a lot of time, though, to be thinking about that because Jim Everett is so dangerous, you don't wind up with a loss on your hand. Boy, you're right. Long doesn't like the noise. Long is back. He throws to Happel, and Happel is out near a first down with that shot and effort. He thinks he got it. Great effort by Happel. Tremendous first down. Watch it from the end zone. Happel will come open right on the left side of your screen. And he makes that second effort right here as he's tackled. He does, looks like he doesn't have it. That's Woodson who's played a sensational game. And then Dunlop comes in. A great effort by Happen. First and ten. Long rolling to the right. Complete the twin early. Down to the 45-yard line of the Boilermakers. Another first down for Iowa. Morgan bringing him down, but after a 15-yard gain. This is one of the few times that we've seen Long roll out, a pre-called rollout. And of course, he'll have early wide open in the seam right there. There's nobody around him. Finally, Morgan, 59, comes in with some help. And a first down, down to the 45. There are some of the Iowa fans who have traveled here as they do every week when this team is on the road, and they're rather pensive right now. Hudson, and he is down to the 40 four-yard line at the four-minute mark. And Long is 19 for 31 in this game for 253 yards. 
One interception by Woodson that ultimately led to a touchdown. Second and nine right here, and you must pay a lot of credit to the Purdue defensive players here in the second half. They have been much more aggressive and better tacklers. Really have. They've played a good second half. Second and nine, long floods his receiver, throws and almost intercepted. That was Cumlin, number 44, who has called a fine game on the field from that inside linebacking spot, who almost picked that pass off, and it will now be third and nine. Bottom of the screen is your receiver. Watch Long tries to force this in as Cumlin comes in here, the linebacker, and almost gets to the receiver just before he... That was a little dangerous throw there by Long. It is now third and nine for Long and the Hawkeyes. Another big play for the Hawkeyes. Over the middle, complete. It's a Halverson. It's a first down inside the 30-yard line. Dishman just could not stay with him that time. Number 19 will try to cover Halverson. Look at the top of your screen. Now, Dishman, number 19, will try to stay with Halverson. He'll cut across the middle right here. Dishman cannot. He's got a one step on him. Long finds it and just enough room to put it in there. Now, let's see what the Purdue defense counters with here. On a first and ten, Long rallying the team. Harmon runs it, 20, and he's got another first down at the 15-yard line. A 14-yard run by Harmon, who has dominated in the first half, but then slowed up somewhat in the second half. Take a look at Harmon accelerate into this hole. Purdue thinking pass that time, and they came back with Ronnie Harmon running for still another first down. In the second half, he has 36 yards rushing and 13 receiving, and in that first half, he was all over the place. He had 120 yards rushing and 104 yards receiving. So that tells you the difference. Here's Harmon again, getting close to the 10-yard line. Warner bringing him down. Era, this has been an impressive drive, and importantly, it is taking a lot of time off of that clock. Not only that, but Long has hit a couple of really key Third down situations on passes that maintain possession of the ball. Happel stretching out to keep that maintain possession of the ball on that third and nine. Second and five, ball at the ten for Iowa. Harmon trying to sweep outside, and he will not get the corner turn. Dishman, the cornerback, finally came up, but there was penetration early, and that disrupted the play. One more time, it could come down to Rob Halpin. And you've got, let's see here, you've got a minute 39. You only have one timeout. Purdue only has one timeout, so they're going to have to be judicious in the use of it. And if they hold here, they may have to use it because I'm sure that Iowa will run the clock down before they try their... They run straight ahead on third down. They get close to the 10, and if that is short of a first down. Now Morgan and Sumlin, the two inside linebackers, slap him down, and they call timeout. Houtman getting ready for the coaches to send him into the game at the 1-11 mark. So a superb drive, and now, Iowa can take the lead if they elect to go to the field goal. We'll be right back. And the pressure is squarely on the shoulder of the young man, Rob Hopkins, who defeated Michigan here earlier this year and now can give Iowa a lead over Purdue at the 1-11 mark. A very impressive time-consuming drive by the Hawkeyes that will leave Jim Everett and Purdue with about a minute to work with and their timeout situation of course is not good right now. How 
Franklin earlier today, made one for the 33, missed one from the 33. The ball will be put down at the 15, so this is a 25-yard field goal attempt. Here it comes. He's got it. Iowa takes the lead at the 108 mark. Rob Hotland puts the upright for another pressure kick. Don't go away, folks. Jim Everett's going to have the ball for a minute and 11 seconds. A minute and eight. They can see the ball go right through the uprights there. There's not much of a rush here. They jump up to try to catch it, but there it goes. You see this young man kick a couple through that were very important, didn't we, Grant? We sure did. Against Michigan, he hit four earlier this year, but not any bigger than this one. I'll at least it, and we'll be right back. remaining here in West Lafayette, Indiana. And the timeout situation shows you that Jim Everett and the Boilermakers must come up with a one-minute drill. They're out of timeout. Cook, with the ball teed up, he will kick it off and set the return it. Woodson is back at the seven-yard line, and he is conferring with Ray Wallace. Cook is ready. Here's the kick. And here's the return by Woodson. Out beyond the 30, he bounces free. He's got daylight, trying to get the corner turned on stem to midfield, and he's out of bounds. 56 seconds left on the clock, and Rod Woodson has given Purdue one last at bat. What a remarkable football player this young man is. Leon Pickett said yesterday when he gets his hands on the ball, he makes something happen and certainly does here. Looks like he's run out of bounds, or, or tackled right there. Takes a clear back across the field. A high hurdle champion can really move. Sims gets over and gets him down inside the 50 yard line. Now it is first down forever. The ball is down. At the 47 yard line, Purdue will go to the shotgun. Everett with time. Throws to the middle, complete, short of the first down. Rodney Carter, they'll have to hurry. Clock continues to run right now. Down toward 40 seconds. Bridge on the sideline. At this point in the season, you would expect Burtnett to try and get the win if he can. Here is Everett, back under pressure. And it is complete to Jackson, and Jackson steps out of bounds inside the 30, 29 seconds to go. At the 12-yard game, the chains will move. It is a first down for the Boilermakers. We can see the concern on Hayden Fry's face. This is an important, very, very important game for him. And you got a guy like Everett, boy, you're sweating all the way. He reminds you of George Allen, doesn't he? <laughs> From the shotgun, with those 29 seconds to go, bad snap. But ever with the good hand, picks it up, throws complete to Carter. That's a mistake. Carter a mistake. He stayed inbound. Did not get the first down. He's got down with the clock moving. Purdue will have to hurry. 13, 12. Carter could have gone out of bounds. Now the officials could stop it. If the defense takes too much time, they can Gotta stop it. it out. We'll have to stop the clock. Everett quickly stops it, and time elapses on the scoreboard. Time runs out on the scoreboard. It is over. And now you should see the argument with the officials. The Purdue coaching staff out there all over the officials. And I've got to tell you, Eric, uh, that I think the clock should have been stopped with about eight seconds to go. It's up. Now, I happen to agree with Leon Burtnett. I don't know whether he would have won this game, but I think when the defense takes as much time as they did getting off the ball, that you should stop the clock
and let them have one more play. Now let's take a look at what happens here from 29 seconds down. Now the first mistake in this sequence is made by Carter. Actually, the first mistake by the center. But Everett, now Carter should have gone right out of bounds. He does not. He stays inbound. Now watch. Time continues to run here at 18 seconds. Now you see how slowly Station's very intelligent. That's why he's got a 3.5 average. He's not getting up. He's not going any place. You see him? Now at that the last point, one over there. The ball the goes clock. down with four seconds. Three. See it right there. Two. They actually should have had a second. It seems to me the ball went out of bounds. Even after three. the ball was out of bounds. Yeah. Right. But I'll tell you. What a game. Regardless. It was a heck of a ball game. Take a look at the last five seconds again. Now here is Everett. He throws the ball. And the clock runs out as the ball goes out of bounds. But I still think that when the defense gets off the ball that slowly, of course, on the other hand, you save a timeout for a situation like that. You know? Yes, that's right. They used their timeout during the course of that uh, second half. They were very costly. There's no chance. Exactly. Exactly. So you can certainly understand the anger. The team had come all the way back, and Leon thought they had a shot here to upset Iowa, but it was certainly not to be. And the Iowa Hawkeyes move one step closer to that Rose Bowl in dramatic fashion. We'll return after this word from your local station. And our Chevrolet, most valuable players of this game, are Iowa tailback Ronnie Harmon and Purdue cornerback Rod Woodson. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students. Era, another outstanding college football game. Boy, it really was. And I, I have to say, I can't say enough, I guess. I should say it this way. Between Everett and Long, I thought we saw two of the greatest quarterbacks I've seen in a long time. But in the end, it was the running game. It was Harmon and Hudson. Iowa had a running game. Unfortunately for Purdue, they did not. And as a result, the winner is the Hawkeyes and not the Boilermakers. But it was a great effort on the part of the Boilermakers. And as a result, the Hawkeyes are one victory away from Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. We'll be right back.